Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Let's play some Packmaster. Welcome in Glacier and d -Hose. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, and we're at Ascension 17 now. I wouldn't exactly say I've memorized all the cards that are available in this gigantic mod pack, but I do have some familiarity. Uh, downfalls do too good to pass up. We're stuck with board games, rip, and biting cold. Uh, Warlock has some good stuff. Distortion is pretty weird. I've never had that one take off yet. Creativity's also got some good stuff. I think I'll go for Warlock. And Jockey. Uh, I kind of want to make imps happen with the Warlock. And Jockey has tons of card draw. They synergize. Let's go. Let's hope it can happen. 100 gold, remove a card, or transform two at the cost of seven max hit points. Uh, transform two is pretty good. We don't actually lose any hit points up front, just max HP. There's a triple rest site path with two elites, including a burning. Or th two or three elites, that's actually perfect. Um... And the Burning Elite is actually... I don't know if I've ever seen this before. The Burning Elite is right before the rest sites. Before the boss fight. Which means we've got the maximum amount of time to prepare. Um, I'm tempted to take the Transform 2. It really is an RNG Fiesta though. Making the deck smaller can actually, it can be pretty good as well. But this kind of does make the deck smaller in a way, because we're getting rid of like two strikes. It's just that we don't know what we're getting. Or I could transform a strike and defend. We're going to have three of each. Yeah, that's probably for the bet. Oh no, Doom Guard? I don't like Doom Guard. 21 damage for two is not that much for the price of exhausting two random cards in your hand. Yeah, I don't, I don't think... I, I don't remember the stats of the Hearthstone card, but I don't think this uh, adequately represents that trade-off. Um, off to the races is... Well, pretty bad in the starter deck, but... I mean, gaining dex and strength is obviously pretty good. But we need to play as many cards as possible after this one to gain strength. Which obviously isn't going to happen yet. Uh, so let's head for the shop via question mark. Might get free gold. We'll need strikes next turn because he's not blocking right now. So cardistry, a strike. And that's a really efficient first turn. We're live with a game I don't understand, but it will be okay. Fair enough. Turtle, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Is Twitch glitching, or is the title and game not updated? I might not have updated it. Twitch has Factorio in the stream game. Yeah, my bad, sorry. Uh, no block in hand, that's not great, and we can't draw block either. I don't mind exhausting any of these. If we, if we exhaust both of the strikes, then we're going to float one energy, so I'll play a strike first. That's fine. Then we take seven and win next turn. We'll probably win next turn. There we go. Fat boy not so slim, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Fixed, fantastic. Starting gun is pretty decent. A little AoE, but it gives you... It's kind of like one energy, draw four. Uh, sorry, draw... Yeah, draw four cards. Uh, you just don't get to draw them straight away. But it does set us up for... A horse's turn later on. We could transform the Doom Guard. I think I'll do that. That really doesn't fit in anything that I want to do with this deck. 
Giddy up. At the start of your turn, add a horse into your hand. That is fantastic. And it gets cheaper if we upgrade it, which uh, I think is pretty much mandatory. Okay. Let's play as many cards as possible after off to the races. And... I don't have a way to deal... Oh, we're going to get weakened, so yeah. Wait, no, I have strength already. That's perfect. I was going to say we're going to get weakened, so it'll take two strikes to kill this anyway. But apparently not. Alright, we need to draw a defend. Rummage has a one in three to get it. Why don't we guarantee it? And then... I guess it's just going to be defend and, defend and strike. Horses will race us to victory. Indeed, indeed. My friend doesn't like the art of the horses, but finally tried them. I think it was yesterday, if not the day before. And had to admit that they're good. This is what we're looking for. Add a horse into your hand whenever you draw cards this turn. All enemies lose health. That's why I was looking for imps. Uh... Where's the Warlock cards? Yeah, Imp. Casts when drawn. Draws a card. Totally passive. Uh, deal a small amount of damage. Increase the damage of Imps by one for the rest of combat. What would be the best Imp card? Whenever a non-Imp... Oh my god. Yeah, it's this one. I'm sure it is. Whenever a non-Imp card is exhausted, add one Imp to your discard pile. That means when it, whenever we play a horse, it adds an imp. Which, horses draw imps, imps draw horses. It's going to be a fun time if we can get this card. Uh, there's also... Shuffle three imps to your draw pile or four imps into your discard pile. That's pretty good. It's a lot more playable. And I think this is the only other imp card. Deal 8 damage, shuffle 1 imp into your draw pile. Okay. That's fine. I, I really want to see uh, Mal Malkazar's imp. Um, I'm pretty sure we can't afford it if we see it here. It could... Uh, maybe. Yeah, no, that is not it. At the start of your turn, make one card in your hand rippable. Which means we could exhaust it. If we want, if and when we want. Uh, I don't care for this, not in this deck. I actually don't fully understand the rip mechanic still. Right click this card to separate its effect from its cost and make both halves exhaust. Does that mean you get to play it for free, but ex I don't know. No, I think I. I think there's a card that's like Shrug It Off, but you can rip it, and I have ripped it, and I don't remember what it does. Um, we're probably going to remove a card here. Pocket Ace is pretty good in this deck as well, but we can't afford both. Making the deck small... well... You don't get many opportunities to remove cards is the thing. Making the deck small before fighting, like, the sentries is not that great, but it's really hard to make a really tiny deck, and we want to hit these powers every single time. Bucket Ace kind of makes the deck smaller. Makes it easier to find what we're looking for on the first lap. And then we can, and, and then we've got horses everywhere, presumably. But that said, I think I will remove a rummage. Just kind of heavy. It does draw a card, but like, two energy? We're not looking for two energy in this deck. I could actually take four elites if I was crazy. I don't turn, we're not going to turn down triple rest site two or three elites. That's too perfect. Horse to imp pipeline, indeed. 
now we get the snake. There's a shop way up here. We'd have to skip rest site. No, we're going to skip it. Okay. Uh, this just does three damage instead of two. It doesn't help us draw or make it cheaper or anything. So that's not the highest priority yet. Uh, way more important to get Giddy up down to one cost, I think. We want to be able to play this whenever we see it. Ooh, that's good. We've got... Off to the races in hand on turn one with a zero cost, and we've got four energy. Let's gain some strength. I'll play Cardistry last, because I don't want to top deck any of this garbage. So... Off to the races, defend. We can strike once without waking him up. Cardistry... And now we have three strength. That's going to help a lot with Lagavulin. And then we giddy up. I think I'll wait one more turn. And we'll make a horse. And just keep it. And then we're going to... Do I want to use the strength potion yet? Probably. Yeah. Lagavulin can be one of the worst ones. Gotta kill it fast. Alright. Can we find home stretch before... No, we just... We don't have to draw cards this turn. We'll only use two energy, but that's okay. He's going to wake up anyway. Now we've got loads of horses, and we've got home stretch. I, I'm a little concerned by the fact there's only one defend down here for the next two turns. But we've got plenty of card draw. Okay. Cardistry defend. Horse. Defend puts us up to 18, and we can't do better this turn. And we can deal some damage with horses. So let's do that. Not too bad. Uh, artistry, defend, horse, defend is 18 again. Not bad. Now he's going to debuff us. We're guaranteed to draw home stretch, and then we've got one, two, three horses. Uh, that's probably fine. Four, five over here. Giddy up. Ooh. Cardistry start gun. Horse start gun. Horse again. 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 Wait. Wait, what was that last card that I just exhausted? Oh, we can't draw anything because the entire deck is in hand. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Welp. Uh, we're drawing more than half of our deck next turn. Who knows what it'll, what it'll be. Okay. That's not a lot of block. Uh, we're going to draw three cards, so we're going to guarantee getting one more defend. If I cardistry the defend first. There we go. That's decent. Uh, and I guess we'll deal four more damage. And this is the last turn we need to block. How much damage is this? 20. Oh, 
This is indeed the last turn we need to block. Bag of Bubbles is pretty good, even if we're not using attack damage much. It removes uh, artifacts. Shaper's Blessing is bonkers. Really, 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 really good card. Just keep gaining plated armor. Uh, we're probably going to upgrade that first. This only retains. Don't care about that. Uh, I'd love to get the damage for Homestretch up, but I think... I think Shapers is more important against the sentries and against Gremlin Knob. Whenever you enter a shop, gain health. Fantastic. We have at least some healing. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Let's see. Yeah, start with off to the races. Artistry, home stretch, horse, home stretch, horse. And that gives us five strength. It's going to be a short fight. Um, six block only costs us one energy. And I guess we can try and draw more horses. Not bad. So then we just need two strikes. Very good. There's the card I was talking about. Fragile Shrug. It's a rippable minus one shrug it off. Um, I don't think any of this fits in the deck. If we're going all in on the horses and hoping for imps. You are mine only costs one energy and exhausts though. Only applies to vulnerable unless we upgrade it. And then it gets one effect without an upgrade and three effects with an upgrade. Hmm. I don't really want to add a card that's just okay and gets added to the upgrade queue. Shrug it off's probably fine. Is it though? No, I think if I'm... Uh, even though it draws a card... It costs energy. I think if I'm adding a block card I want to do better. Especially when we've already got Shaper's Blessing. Oh, the card game. Hazardous Strike. Deal 18 damage when ripped. Exhaust two cards at random. No thank you. So now I've got a 1 in 11 to get a card that I don't want. Doubt. Frosted Edge. Whenever you apply Frostbite, gain 1 strength. I really don't want to pick that up. Normally I would click here, but I think let's play it safe. Don't want to rummage. Don't there's the frosted edge. So we can look here. Parasite. And this is hazardous strike. Prepare crush would have been eh, would have been okay. Forty eight health out of sixty four. I don't think we If I take this elite, I probably have to rest. And we miss out on an upgrade. Really want home stretch upgraded. Don't care about any of these. And the rest is basics. Hmm. I'm not going to upgrade like a defend or something. Even though we need block against this boss. Maybe I should have taken that block cut. Now we've got shapers. Uh, I think we can take the elite. Oh, okay. Turn one and turn two Shaper's Blessing is very, very good. And off to the races. I should have played it first. I didn't realize how much energy I had. That's actually really bad. We're going to be like minus... What? Uh, minus two strength compared to what we should be. 
because I was rushing there. We're going to deal most of our damage with uh, card draw, I think. But still. That's 15 block. And we definitely need Giddy up here. The main threat of the sentries is drawing nothing but dazed. Now we draw two extra every turn. That's really, really good. Also, gaining eight metallicize already is fantastic. And since we're not dealing damage with card draw here, uh, I think we'll just let that horse go into the discard pile. Okay, now we need to find some block. There's only like one here. I do want to deal some damage this turn. So let's do home stretch. Horse. Horse. That's a little bit of block. Horse. And horse. There's a defend. Okay. Cardistry first, so we have defend next turn. And that is one less than full block. We're going to lose one plated armor, sadly. But as you can see, we're doing the vast majority of our damage with horses. So that uh, mistake was pretty bad, but... Uh, but it really isn't going to matter. Okay. Uh, that's pretty bad if I didn't have card draw. I was thinking of card string the strike, but... Wow, we actually only need one block, which means cardistry does it. Sure. Cardistry... Let's kill the other sentries, so next turn we're guaranteed to not take damage. Uh, and then we may as well start killing with card draw here. Starting gun is pretty good. That went pretty well. And we wouldn't have taken any less damage if I had avoided that mistake. As an ex brony I fear no ponies. Oh my god. The power of ponies, fear it. Seepercat, welcome. You horsing around here? Indeed, indeed. Uh, that is an imp card. Deal 8 damage, shuffle 1 imp. It's not the imp card that I want, but... Well, it's really not the imp card I want. We're only going to get 1 imp per cycle at best. It does slightly more damage than a strike. We've only got three of those. Uh, we do have starting gun as well for damage. Not really concerned about damage against this boss. We just need to block. It's the only one like that in the game. Um, but yeah, should I be greedier? I think, I think we uh, ignore Soul Shear. This gives us, this gives us an imp with every horse we exhaust, though it costs three to get it going. Only difference is if it goes in the draw pile or discard pile, if we upgrade it. And this one gives us three to five imps, depending on upgrade and which, whether we're putting it in the draw pile or discard pile, for one energy. This is the top tier imp card for this deck. Malkazar's imp would be really good too. This is just more playable. But I don't think Soul Shear does enough. In fact, like, it's a one energy card that we're going to draw that, uh, that just gives us one imp. Nah, let, let's, let's skip it. Draw three cards. If this card is exhausted, draw three cards. One energy. 
Is this worth considering, or do we just want the zero-cost card draw? I think we just want the zero-cost card draw. Except for the few fights where you get punished for it, keeping the deck small and consistent is very, very useful. Lantern is good. We have plus two energy on turn one. This is not numbers. Okay. Uh, let's make some horses next time we play. Next turn we play off to the races, even if we can't get that much strength. Uh, unfortunately, we're floating a lot of energy this turn, but it's more important to prepare. Okay, start gun, cardistry, shaper's blessing, plated armor helps a lot in this fight as well. Well, it will if we can protect it. Okay, here we go, here we go, this is actually going to give us a lot of strength. Off to the races, horse. I don't want to miss Shaper's Blessing. Yeah, it's ethereal. We lose it if we don't play it. So we're just going to play that after all of this stuff. And then Cardistry, Shapers. Cool. So let's see. Eight and nine. And four. Is this full block? It is. Very cool. So we only need to find 12 block each turn. Doesn't even matter if I play a defend here. We're going to play shapers every time we can. Uh, and we need to find one more block so that we can keep all of this uh, plated armor. And there it is. Do we play horses this turn? One, two, three, four times three. We could deal like 12 damage with it this turn. Alternatively, I could wait one or two and play loads and loads of, loads of horses. How many non-horse cards do we have? One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hand could get full, right? Let's just do it now. No, I should have thought of that. Okay. Rip Shaper's Blessing. I guess we've got more room for horses now. I really should have cardistried the starting gun the first time. We've still got positive uh, dexterity and strength, which is very nice. We're going to need to find block here. We need 10 block, so two defend cards. Uh, we don't have to play starting gun at any particular time. Here we go. And I guess we'll make two more horses and deal some damage. Alright. I might just save the horses for later. And then... I think I'll dig for home stretch this turn. On second thought, what if we spend one horse? Get him down to eight. That's got to be lethal next turn. There we go. This thing always reminds me of those pigs in Japan that you use to keep mozzies away. Wait, what? Sold share is basically a better strike? Yeah. 
Oh, do we take another starting gun? I don't think so. Show-off is decent. We do need some good block other than Shaper's Blessing. And it draws two extra cards the next turn, which we'll never get damage with that. It happens at the start of turn. But it's just a really good card. And it sets us up for the next turn. The fact that we got a singing bowl when we're trying to keep the deck small is really, really nice as well. Plus two max hit points also increases your current hit points, so that's just a heal. But yeah, show off is too good to pass up. And we're gonna we're gonna upgrade the block for this boss. Okay, that's a good start. That's a really good start. Off to the races, play as many cards as we can after that, which include home stretch, horse home stretch, start gun, horse. No, we found the shape as bl You've got to be kidding me. Okay. That was not that improbable. I should have played around it. Shaper's Blessing would have made this fight so much easier. Let's find some block. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay. If the last card played this combat was an attack, gain six additional block. I think we'll just take the two damage. Actually, well, yeah. We could effectively take one damage to deal 12 and make two horses. Let's do that. I screwed that up. Okay. Let's let's just slow down, think things through. Play with horses, you're going to get hoofed. It sounded better in my head, I swear. I see. 7 and 7 is 14. Yeah, we can full block this. Let's home stretch next turn. When we've got more energy. Show off almost full blocks. It would full block if I didn't mess up and let Shaper's Blessing exhaust. The thing is, if we only played it once, this stance is busted. Uh, it gets up to six or seven plated armor. It just keeps coming back. I've never actually had a deck where I had this card and a way to leave the stance either, but apparently we get an artifact if we do. I could take one damage to deal a bunch on the turn where he's attacking us. Or, or we could just chill. We're, we're, we're gaining a horse every turn. And even more horses. Okay. I actually need 33 damage to prevent him from attacking. We can block 26 of this pretty easily. Uh, we can block all of it with a speed version. That's fine. Alright, here we go. Artistry, home stretch, horse, home stretch, horse, horse, strike to make room, horse, and I'm gonna like run out of room half the time playing horses here, but we got double hanged. We got uh, home stretch played twice, so I think it's worth. Oh, each one of them is only going to draw one. So that is... Well, each of these is six damage for zero energy. I, I think that's probably worth. I, I think that's fine, actually. We can get the cardistry out of the way.
Yep, that's alright. Imagine if we could make the deck so small that that's not an issue. So what's our count right now after exhausts and powers? Uh, I don't really want to count minus one for Shaper's Blessing. Though it is technically... it does exhaust. So we're minus one, minus two, minus three, kind of minus four, which gets us down to ten, which is a full hand. All right. Um, we can full block for one energy. Let's cardistry home stretch, defend, horse, home stretch, horse, horse. That's pretty decent. Casually full block. Uh, 19 plus 4. Yeah, we can uh, strike here as well. And the condition for subdue carries across turns. So this one energy is 16 block. Um, it's going to take two energy to get to 20 regardless. Or we could just kill him now. Probably. Yeah, we could definitely kill him now. Nice. All in. It, this can be a really, really good card, but I think this is the last deck that we want to put all in into. Massive energy cost, massive damage, draw three cards, gain three energy. Or make it four if you upgrade it. But you skip your next turn. Uh, it's pretty much just a finisher. The Solarium. Draw three cards, give them ethereal exhaust. That's actually ridiculously good in this deck, isn't it? I might end up exhausting something I don't want to sometimes, but... For the most part, probably not. I mean, our most precious card is already ethereal. These are powers. If we draw home stretch and make it ethereal, it could be pretty awkward. That's our draw damage engine gone if it exhausts. This only happens once, though, and we can probably play around it. And if it exhausts, like, some strikes, then we're happy. I think we do take it. I don't know, it's gonna be awkward. So what if we draw, like, an expensive power? What if we end up with... Uh, Malkazar's Imp, and we draw it, and it becomes ethereal? And we can't afford to play it. No, I think I'm going to skip. Give us that health. Transform all strikes and defends. We've got decent block cards. It's risky, but these are crap. I guess Slaver's Collar is okay. Definitely don't want to give an enemies strength. Energy is not that important in this deck. Alright, we're going to open Pandora's box. Please have mercy. Blick is good. Uh, Astral Broodmother is pretty good. I remember this being really, really good because I like put a gem in it so it would also give me uh, frost or something. But yeah. Gain block, shuffle it into your draw pile. When you draw it, gain block again. Or gain block when you draw it to begin with. It's really good. Flimsy bash uh, sucks except we can just rip it and exhaust it so that's not too bad. Uh, refrigerate exhausts, which is nice. And I'll take some a little bit of frostbite, sure. Deal seven damage to a random enemy X times. 
and the re-roll mechanic counts for nothing in this deck. Um, not ideal for this deck, but it's fine. I mean, it's better than a strike. And there's Seeds of Destruction. We have our imps. This is the S-tier imp card for this deck, I think. That's fantastic. That actually couldn't have gone much better. The only card that I dislike here, we can just rip it. Love it. Imps, indeed. Which way are we going to go? One, two, one... We can get a triple rest path with two elites. That sounds pretty good to me. And the second elite is optional, which is even better. That both elites are optional. But I feel like... We're pretty strong? Question mark? Anyway, this is the starting point regardless. Uh, off to the races is the power that I want to see on turn one. This is not it, sadly. We're definitely playing shapers. We're definitely getting rid of Refrigerate before he hexes us. We're definitely playing Giddy Up. Um, don't really care to play this right now. We need to draw... We need to get our uh, powers and stuff going. I mean, off to the races is sort of not that important. It pretty much just helps us block. I mean, a bunch of strength is good, obviously. Uh, let's get rid of Flimsy Bash. So we rip it. And then we have what? That actually does something. Damn. Does this do something? No. So the top half just exhausts. I guess that makes sense. So how... I, I remember some of these cards saying... Draw cards equal to the number of art and status cards in your draw pile. Exhaust pile. Okay. Wasn't there another one? Exhaust all your art and status cards. Gain one strength for each card exhausted. <laughs> Left brain. Okay. Um... Deal 12 damage, the art card causes the target to lose 12 hit points. So you can just deal 24 damage once with this? Really? That's pretty good. Gain 6 block, apply 2 weak to all enemies. Oh, it costs 2 though. I thought it was good until I realized it cost 2. That's pretty bad. Deal 6 damage, deal an additional 6 damage for each card ripped this turn. Draw 3 cards when ripped, gain energy. That'd be good. We could just rip it the first time we see it and play it and get rid of it. That's kind of like draw 3. But this is basically... Uh, what's that colorless card called? It's not called Chess Master, but you'd think it was Grand Strategy or something, based on the art. Okay. 12 damage. We can block 6. Not great. Uh, we're going to make some hexes, uh, some dazed in our draw pile here. But we're going to add horses to them as well. So it's probably not that bad. One, two, three. Or one, two, three energy. Imps only replace themselves. They, they only draw one. I think draw is more important in this fight. This is one of the few fights that punishes you for a small deck. 
Well, not just for a small deck. I think the dazes always go straight to your draw pile. Okay. So we're going to want to gain strength. This is also a skill. We don't get punished for attacks in this fight. It also increases the frostbite. That's a lot of damage. How much is this? 13 times 3. Not enough. We can flick for 14 damage on top of that. 39 plus 14. 59. Oh. And that's without the frostbite. Nice. You better believe we're taking a second home stretch plus. Also, we got smithing oil. We can. We have to do it in combat, but we can permanently upgrade a card. What card should that be? We can retain off to the races, but I pretty much want to play it every time I see it. Um, I'm not. I'm in a hurry to get it played. I don't really care how much strength we get from it. If it was innate on an upgrade, that'd be an easy pick. Uh, probably Broodmother? Or, no, it's going to be Seeds of Destruction, I think. Broodmother doesn't give us that much extra block on upgrade. Plus two, plus one. I mean, that is like 12 if we play it when we see it. As opposed to nine. Yeah, it's like the standard plus three, really. Cardistry's decent to upgrade as well, just because it's zero cost. We don't have any anything in this deck that upgrades things when we see them. But we don't have a whole lot we need to upgrade either. Uh, I think it's going to be Seeds of Destruction. Let's get those imps going. Well, okay. Seeds or Broodmother, we might upgrade. Okay. So if I, I... I forgot to check. If I rip this, is the lower half free to play, or is it only the top half? Let's start with... We've got five energy, which is fantastic. Let's start with Off to the Races. Cardistry Show Off is full block. And I could either deal 9 damage or make a horse. Can we still rip this? Yeah. We can't play the top half to get rid of it, but we can play the bottom half for free. Oh wow. That's kind of... That's pretty good. Two energy when we want to exhaust this. Oh, this hits a random enemy. Oh, that's lucky. Okay. I don't want to miss Shaper's Blessing. Even though the fight should be pretty short. Uh, this is going to be 15. We can kill this guy. We only need 11 block. Oh, how about Refrigerate? Refrigerate, Start Gun, Blessing, and Flick. Yeah, that seems good. And if we flick the Show Off, uh, it's going to deal a lot more damage. Normally I would kill this guy right now, but, I mean, look at this. Oh, he's actually dead. Even better. Shuffle imps into your draw pile. Home stretch. Horse. And dead to imps and or horses. And I should have used the smithing oil. Distilled chaos isn't that good though. Still, I re 
that was a mistake. I forgot to use the smithing oil. We really should just have two potions after this. I don't think we do take another start gun. We've been over this. And yeah, we're just gonna gain health. Maybe I should take... Oh. I was going to say maybe I should take fights instead of a question mark since we can keep gaining two health like this. Uh, 40 gold to pick from three potions though is pretty good. We might get another smithing oil. Nope. Entropic is pretty good though. Even though swift potion can be used for damage in this deck. Nah, it's fine. Fill all your empty potion slots with random potions. We'll do that as soon as we use the smithing oil. Okay. Five energy. One, two, three, four. Show off just to draw more cards next turn isn't the worst idea, but... One, two, three, four, five. I I'd love to play all of these instead. Get rid of the flimsy bash. Uh, do we upgrade Seeds of Destruction? I think we do. And then we find out what's in here. Explosive Potion Gamblers. Gamblers is pretty good. Gamblers is actually really good in this deck. We can use it for damage. Explosive is okay against a certain elite. But it's generally pretty weak. So we might just use it up here in case we get another potion. Shuffle five imps to the discard pile. Exhaust our refrigerate and make a horse for later. Not the best opening, but I'll take it. Especially getting rid of Bash. They're not attacking, which is fantastic. Off to the races, Blessing, and Flick. Gain two strength. Now we need 18... Uh, we need 10 block, which we've got. I want to Cardistry Broodmother last, because I want to do horse things this turn. There we go. Holy crap, that was a lot stronger than I thought it would be. Uh, wow. I, okay, it never crossed my mind that we would have lethal that turn. Wow. We're not taking another one. We keep the deck small. We add max health. Speed potion is kind of hard to use, honestly. I find it much easier to use the perma decks or perma strength potions. Or to decide when to use them. I think we can take an elite here. C -c -c combo, indeed. Not Slipnip, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Is this the stream for Spire Lovers? Uh, probably. We have to play Shapers. We're going to play Off to the Races first. We've got two energy left. I think we'll get Refrigerate out of the way and play Seeds of Destruction. Five imps into the discard pile. Then again, it might have been worth putting them in the draw pile, because we're going to get hexed. Probably should have thought of that. Okay. It's actually quite a lot of damage. Uh, I definitely want to... Hardestry the Brute Mother... 12 plus 12. Well, I can't do better here. Do I skip the flick? 
so that we exhaust Ascender's Bane. And this does nine. Or do we hit the bird twice? I don't think the bird's going to be a problem for that long. So we want to hit the uh, Chosen here. Right. Let's flimsy bash for free. And he's dead. Home stretch. Horse. Giddy up. Block. And horse. Not too bad. We have, now we have to kill him because he's going to scale his damage ridiculously quickly. Is this modded? Yes, it is. It's it is. Uh, where is it? The Packmaster and the Packmaster expansion packs. Burb, indeed. For a second, I was afraid you were going to kill it. Wait, what? Oh, slay this but I see what you did there. Um, I think we just save this for later, because every time we play a skill, we put a dazed in our draw pile. Just let those dazed exhaust. And this is where things get a little bit ugly. Um, Cardus free the Broodmother. And... As much as I want to get rid of Flimsy Bash, it doesn't do anything. And I really want more horses. Actually, imps are much better. I don't think the imps trigger the... Uh... I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think the imps trigger the hex. No, they don't. Okay. Can't say no to this turn, though. Home stretch, horse. Definitely show off. Horse, horse, horse. Flick the shapers so that we get to keep it. Horse, horse. And next time, next time we draw an imp, he's dead, which is. Uh, very likely to be next turn. Actually, it's guaranteed because we've got uh, one horse every turn from Giddy Up. And there it goes. Oh, also guaranteed because we played Show Off last turn. Draw two additional cards the next turn. Draw cards equal to the number of art and status cards in your exhaust pile. No, I don't think that's any good here. More health. And... What do we upgrade? I could heal instead, but it, if we're far enough ahead or not falling behind, it's better to do something that will result in losing health less. I think it's going to be upgrade cardistry. Just because we can, we, we play this every time we see it, pretty much. And next would be Broodmother. I think this benefits twice from Dexterity as well, which is fantastic. We get seven and then six. Even without upgrading it after off to the races. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be Cardistry just because it's zero energy. We play it every time we see it. Okay, I really want to draw power uh, off to the races here, if possible. I also want to kill these two, and card draw is AoE here. Start with home stretch. Starting gun. Horse. He's already dead. Um. 
it just occurred to me that the top half of Flimsy Bash by itself would allow Flick to hit three times. Even though the card itself does nothing directly. Probably should have used it that turn, actually. Pretty good start, though. No attack. Very good. I could hit for... he's not still vulnerable. Uh, I think we have to draw off to the races. Here we go. And... Do I home stretch this turn? I think so, but... Well, yeah, yeah, I do. We want to play as many cards as possible. If I card us three the home stretch, it doesn't matter because we're just going to draw it. Then again, I don't want to draw Shaper's Blessing unless we get Flick as well. How many cards are we drawing? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to draw three of these cards. And I might not get... I might get Shapers without Flick. I really should have exhausted Flimsy Bash. I mean, we do have the perma-plated... We, we have up to six or seven permanent-plated armor. I think it's more important to deal damage. On the other hand, leaving those horses would it... Yep, there it goes. Rip shapers. Uh, I might make sure I have this next turn. Okay. Start gun home stretch. Oh, and let's put imps. We'll be a little bit greedier and put five in the discard pile, since we've only got seven in the draw pile and two horses. There go the imps. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's flick and make sure we have flick next turn as well. And that's probably going to be lethal. Or it could be lethal this turn. I don't think we need a smoke bomb. Left brain, no. Trample? If you could get trample to cost zero... Even if it was weaker, I think it would be a much better card. I don't like paying one energy for something like this in a deck where we're trying to just draw cards 700 times per turn. So let's just get health and upgrade... Uh, it's going to be Broodmother, I think. Don't care about three damage. Don't care about damage and vulnerable. Especially when we're going to exhaust this. Don't care about damage. Don't care about direct damage. Don't care about... What is the difference here? If they already had Frostbite, yeah, that's never happening. The only real merit to this card... Well, okay, to be fair, it has helped us kill some things. But the real merit of Refrigerate is that it exhausts. Um, don't care about retaining off to the races. So it's literally only Arasani Broodmother that I care about upgrading at this point. Which is fantastic. I could even go for another Elite here, but I don't know that that's going to go that well for us. I mean, it probably is. Do I really skip a rest site? No, we could use it to heal. 
Bag of Prep is absolutely fantastic in this deck. Holy crap. So now we're drawing eight cards on turn one, which is more than half of our deck. Look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. And we have five energy on turn one. Okay. Easy off to the races. I could even flick the Shaper's Blessing uh, so that we could do more stuff otherwise. One, two, three, four, five. A hand is pretty full, though. So am I actually... Am I actually going to run into trouble whereby... I put two horses in hand. I've played one, two, three, four cards. So we're down to six. Every time I draw two, we're plus one. So plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. No, we can't actually... We can't actually hit max hand size this turn, right? And how much energy is this? One, two, three, four, five. But maybe I don't use the starting gun. Maybe I try to play Giddy Up or Seeds of Destruction. That might actually be pretty good. And we get a lot of strength. I could Gambler's Brew at the end of the turn just to deal a bunch of damage. We'll consider it. All right, off to the races. Home stretch, home stretch. Horse, horse. Seeds of destruction. Five imps in the discard pile. And then we flick the Shaper's Blessing so that we can play it later. That's pretty good. And there go the imps. Next one deals seven damage. He, uh, he has hexed us. Every single card in hand triggers a hex. But I think it's worth to get rid of refrigerate. We obviously want to play this power. Cardistry. I'm not going to cardistry Asani. Just to get block like next turn. We're not. We're not going to add two dazed. Okay. Um, I want to gain nine block. We'll lose our barrier. Shaper's Blessing alone. Yeah, that's the card that I want to play this turn. But not before double home stretch. Ooh. Do I take nine damage? Nah. There it is, just in time. And we may as well flick. Oh, he's dead. I wasn't even looking. Awaken is a little bit tempting. It's a lot of heals. And we get that comfy security blanket. That we get that much health back if we would have died. But it's kind of, it's a two energy albatross around our necks. And it makes the deck bigger. I don't think we really can slash need to. Let's just grab max health. Which we're going to keep doing a lot. And here we have nothing I care about upgrading. It's a very strange, unfamiliar sensation. It can get us to full health, or we can recall now and not waste, like, three health. The rest is going to be a bigger heal after we've added more max hit points. This is 
definitely correct, as long as we don't die. Let's get the recall out of the way. Sneko could be terrible for us. Let's, uh... Yeah, randomized cost when we draw things could be really, really bad. But conversely, the more we draw, uh, the better off we are against randomized cost. Off to the races. Home stretch, start gun, horse. I want to find a uh, shaper's blessing. Well, I can flick it if we find it. I could deal more damage instead. No, I think in this instance I'd rather get it played. There it is. Oh, and that counts as a card to gain strength. That's pretty good. Six strength. And then we flick the biggest card we have. And he's more than half dead. Good start. Three horse, uh, three cost horse is not a good start. <laughs> Neither is card uh, six block for two energy on cardistry. Uh, so we're going to lose our barrier. Wait, no, just barely not. Fantastic. Giddy up is tempting. Because the horse is always going to cost zero. But I think getting some imps going is probably worth more. Okay. Now what? Seeds of Destruction is zero again? That's actually really, really good. I think we're going to lose our barrier. 24 plus 6 is 30. Nope. Okay. Let's do it this way. I think we win. Uh... Half the discard pile is imps. He's hitting us once, we've got barrier. We can do what we want here. Home stretch. Horse. There we go. Nope. Not yet. Cardistry start gun. Uh, I guess flick. There we go. Max health. Don't mind if I do. Now we're up to 81. Flick dice. Deal damage, roll a d6. Don't think so. No, we're not taking any of these. More health. Give me back my zero cost cards, right? Alright, last delete of Act 2 is Stabby Book. Uh, we only need to block 14 on turn 1. If I cardistry Broodmother, that's 11 plus 5. That's full block. We'll do that last, and then we get a uh, 5 block for free next turn. We definitely want to Seeds of Destruction. I would like to play off to the races. But... Oh, let's, let's bash him for free. Fantastic. And then... And then what? We need to save one energy for block. Alternatively, I could play show off and we draw all of this next turn. And then that guarantees what we're doing next turn. Um, but then we're not doing much with like card draw this turn. Nah. I guess I could 
10 times x damage. One, two, three, four, five, or just start gun is one less damage. And then we get two horses over here. That's probably pretty good. I could also cardistry the show off so we have it next turn, just in case. That's pro yeah, yeah, we've got three energy next turn though. I want to play off to the races, and we'll probably sacrifice our barrier. Uh, how about we seeds next turn? That sounds good. And then... Just whack him. Oh, this uh, shuffles itself into the draw pile. If we play it now. Nah, we need damage. Get him. Alright, seven times three. I don't think we're going to get the chance to block this. We did manage to not draw off to the races in the starting hand for this turn. It's pretty bad. I guess we'll start with a horse, or should, should I home stretch horse? If I home stretch horse, we're not playing off to the races. Giddy up is fine, though. We're going to block one, barrier the next one, and take one hit. I probably should have put Broodmother in the draw pile. Hmm. Alternatively, I could make even more imps. Make more imps, giddy up, and shapers. That seems fine. And we can probably flick off to the races for three times uh three times seven damage. Okay. Giddy up and more imps. And then flick the off to the races. Alright, we need to kill him before he makes more wounds. That's decent. The fact that I don't have any block this turn is less decent, but at least he's only hitting us once. I think we go home stretch into horses, forget about this other stuff. We need to find block. I can always gambler's brew as well, which would deal a bunch of damage as well as finding block for us. Uh if it comes to that. Okay, another shape is as good. Oh, is this lethal? Uh, it might be. Yeah. Nice. That was pretty good. Happy flower. Th every three turns we gain one energy. A bit inconsistent, but I'll take it. Uh, I don't think perception... Perception check is normally pretty good, but I don't think... Uh, I can make it cost zero. Get a random amount of extra block each turn, pretty much. Sometimes we'll use it for damage. Okay, yeah, we've got such a short... We've got, like, no upgrade queue, and it's going to be a zero-cost power. And we're going to get more block out of it. I think that's pretty good. Alright. Um... That's a lot of damage. There's no guarantee that we're going to... Well, there's nearly a guarantee that we'll be able to block... Alright, I don't want to miss off to the races on the turn when we have 5 energy. 
We won't cardistry homestruck. We don't have energy to spare. No, uh, homestretch rather. Horse. Shaper's blessing. Absolutely. Cardistry, shapers, and 22. 14 and 9 is 23. We have to spend one energy to save. To just barely save barrier. Sad. And flick. Doesn't matter what. And throw chips for one more strength. I missed like two or three damage because I didn't do this first. Oops. Uh, making perception check as zero cost power is also going to help us gain strength. So that's pretty good. If I play these three, Shaper's Blessing, Giddy Up, Homestretch, we're not going to be able to play Seeds of Destruction. Well, I guess I could play it just to make another horse for later. That's fine. Next energy we have bonus. Uh, next turn we have bonus energy as well. Okay. As much as I'd like to play seeds first. Six and five. Let's draw cards. I should remove the throw chips. It's really not um, doing that much for us. Oh, then again, if we get like a snail boss, that's one big card to do big things. Keep the card count down. What's this? 14, 9. Show off is full block. That's fantastic. I don't want to draw shapers. We really need to get perception check down to zero cost because I think it's, I think uh, it's more worthwhile to make imps here. Okay. Shapers again is full block. Cardistry, home stretch, horse, home stretch, horse, horse, imps, 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 horse. That's lethal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Divided Fury. At the start of your turn, make one card in your hand rippable. I don't think so. No thank you. You are mine plus. I don't care about any of this except for making the target weak. And for one energy too weak, exhaust is not very, not great. Uh, so let's just skip this. And then we upgrade the perception check. Okay. Turn one. 18 damage incoming. We need 13 more block. This is seven. We can play Arasani Broodmother twice, since we've got Cardistry and Card Draw. Looks like we might have to. Uh, we've got five energy, so I really want to start with Off to the Races. One, two, three, four, five. I guess that'll have to do. And Throw Chips, uh, again, is going to add one strength even if it doesn't actually do anything. All right. Cardistry, Broodmother, Homestretch, Horse uh, is actually full block because this gives us block when we draw. Uh, I don't want to miss Giddy up. Although, 
considering the way imps accelerate, I almost think this is worth more right now. The horses are quite fast, but the imps scale, and this enemy has 440 hit points. Let's get the imp scaling. Now we play Shapers and Perception Check. So as of next turn, we get a random bonus to our first attack or block. Um, wow. No card draw in this card draw deck. We're going to lose our barrier if I don't do this. I think this is going to mean we have four cards. So we Gambler's Brute and draw four. Fant really? Really, really? Draw this again? Okay, I see how it is. Um, so we're looking for how much? 10, 11, we need three block, so any block. Do I start gun? No, we might find show off. And there's a lot of imps in here. Okay, that's perfect. Shapers, giddy up. Plus one on the first dice roll. Sad. 27. We can block 26? Really? No, we, we can easily do this. But I, I have to spend one energy to block one here. Not great. We've still got barrier, so I don't want to take one damage. 26. Yeah. Unless I draw a cardistry, and then we have a zero cost and a uh, zero energy block card. If this had rolled anything but one, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have this problem this turn. Okay, here we go. 24 plus 6 is 30, which means we can make more imps. Fantastic. Alright, what's next? Always Shaper's Blessing. I could waste 2 energy to get rid of the Flimsy Bash, but I'm not going to pass up the chance to make more imps. And start gun, and flick the bash. And I won't draw since we're not uh, dealing damage by drawing this turn. Okay. Home stretch. Home stretch again, because we have bonus energy. We need to block. We've got 13... We need another eight. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah, this is why this is why I got the dice. Sixteen block from Broodmother. Sure. I'll play it last, since it'll shuffle itself back into the draw pile. Or thirteen block from Cardistry, which is all we need, right? Yeah. So I don't have to spend any energy blocking. But we're not going to lose Shaper's Blessing. I could flick, but getting up to 10 uh, plated armor would be fantastic. So let's play it now. And let's look for Seeds of Destruction. That's home stretch. Um. Imp, 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 starting gun. So this is a 50-50. Oh, I can flick first. Okay. So we're guaranteed to get Seeds of Destruction now. Nice. And we'll make sure we can play it next turn. Beautiful. Imp 
Ghosts are now dealing 17 damage. Let's make some more. Start gun. Uh, maybe I should have refrigerated first. Nah. I don't care about the direct damage. I mean, to, to exhaust this would be good, but still. Let's look for more imps. I'm not... Oh, I was going to say I'm not super sad that this is going to exhaust this turn, but... Let's keep it for old time's sake. And he's dead. Nice. Unfortunately, we're not being offered... I can't click on this at the moment. Uh, Malkazar's whatchamacallit? Three energy, get an imp every time something exhausts. A non-imp card would be insane. Is unrelenting form good in this deck? When you reach two or fewer cards in hand, draw two cards and gain energy. What is advantage? Roll dice an additional number of times and take the highest value of the rolls. It costs one no matter what. I don't think we take that. Ripped Pex doesn't make sense in this deck. I mean, we're at the point where this is working really, really well, and there's just like a handful of cards that are not that good that I want to exhaust, uh, want to remove. But Unrelenting Form is a power. Three cost, though, even if you upgrade it. It's not like we're struggling... When do we ever get down to two cards, though, in our hand? Not that often. Nah, I think it's... I think in this case it's harder to play than it is worth it. If we had some power shenanigans like uh, Mummified Hand or... Or if we, like, healed every time we play a power... I'd probably take it, but in this case, I think we skip. More health is always good, too. We can't take Velvet Choker, obviously. Uh, Collector Badge. We are kind of ignoring the enemy. No, I need to know how much we have to block. Each turn after you play a card from three different packs, gain energy next turn. Three chips counts, even if it doesn't do anything when we play it. Maybe I'll end up keeping it just because of that. Uh, this is going to exhaust. This is going to exhaust. So we've got... Obviously we've got cards from horses all the time. I don't think the core set counts. Three different packs. So one, two, three, four, down four. Okay. Okay, yeah, this might be, this might be good. It might be good to keep throw chips just because it'll often give us one energy next turn. And these options are garbage. So what card do I want to remove? Flick, Rescues, Shaper's Blessing, Refrigerate is not very good. We're dealing so little damage with direct attacks. The point of Flick is just to discard Shaper's Blessing. And sometimes it does like a bunch of damage when we Flick like a uh, two cost card. It's got to be Flimsy Bash. Yeah, Flimsy Bash is definitely the worst card in the deck. Just because it costs two energy to exhaust. That's the only reason it's super bad. So we want a shop for removal. And... I don't know about question marks, because if we get the fall event, 
there's a pr there's pretty good odds that it's going to ask us to remove a card that we're sad about. So we might want to minimize those. Triple Recite to Elite. That sounds pretty good. Also, we have quite a bit of gold. Six energy on turn one. Fantastic. We're definitely going to start with off to the races. We've already got five block. This alone full blocks. And I would love to see it next turn as well. So that's that sorted out. I definitely want to play Giddy Up. And I think it counts as like playing two cards if I rip the flimsy bash and get rid of it. I don't want to draw Shaper's Blessing this turn with no energy. Yeah, let's do this. Three strength and four strength. That's not too bad. Okay. Nine, ten, eleven, plus six. It's fifteen. We're going to be one off on the block. Unless we draw something. We only need one energy for this. If we simply draw Broodmother, we gain five block. Minus two for the burn. So I think we can go for double home stretch this turn. Yep, there it is. Perception check, so we're guaranteed to get energy next turn. No, we need one more card type. That's going to be Shaper's Blessing. There we go. Uh, and I definitely, definitely want to play Seeds of Destruction. Okay. 26 damage incoming. We can let it go to the buffer if we get rid of the burn. Or we can try and block it. We've got plus 8. 17 plus 6. We're almost there already. Thanks to the dice. Let's... That's a lot of imps. Let's look for show-off, potentially, so I won't start gun this turn. Oh, that's good. Is that full block? Yeah, it is. Wait, minus six. Yeah, it's full block. I guess we'll keep drawing cards. And he's basically dead. Nice. No Doom Guard. I don't think we take a second Seeds of Destruction. The deck is quite small. Uh, maybe. Actually, I think we do. It means we can scale our imps theoretically twice as fast, almost. And I don't think the imps count as playing a card against the uh, time boss, which is our worst nightmare if all of our damage was coming from horses. Yeah, I think we do take second seeds, especially since we're going to remove a card soon. Okay. Off to the races for sure. Perception check. Uh, we need 10 block. It might have to be show off. In which case I'll play giddy up. Yeah, let's just... Cardistry the show off so we have it next turn. And giddy up. And we get bonus energy next turn. Good start. 
12 and 13, 25 damage incoming. Dice only gives us plus 2. Sad. Uh, this would be full block if we had any plated armor by itself. 4 energy. 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe? Sure, and we can keep the horse for later. Many imps. And I guess we can flick. Always play the throw chips just in case I forget for collector's badge. That's a lot of damage. Dice roll isn't too bad here. I don't think we can kill one this turn. Oh, it's only the front one doing 11 by 2. Okay. And then 13 times 2. Maybe we can kill this. We've got 5 energy. How many imps are in here? A little bit. Flick the flimsy bash. Oh, wow. Okay. It's a bit, a bit more damage than I thought we had. So we need to block 11 and 13. We've got 9. Uh, 29. That's very, very much enough. And I guess we could home stretch. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh wow. Never mind. What why would I not think that was lethal that turn? Foolish. Uh a flick plus is honestly not worth, um, even though it's an upgrade from this one. We're not adding stuff to the deck here. Alright, time to remove. Ooh, Dolly's mirror. If I double perception check, do we like roll 2d8? That could actually be really strong and also far more consistent for the extra block. I love... I just love... I'll just draw a card and they're dead. Good talk, yes. It is a good talk. Uh, Prepare Crush is normally really, really good, but I don't think it works in this deck. It's basically a charge battery minus one that gives us uh, a big ethereal exhaust two cost attack next turn. If you can men if you can upgrade the Slime Crush, it actually deals AOE damage as well. A uh, Kale, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're definitely not doing this. Normally it's quite good, but you can't skip it if you change your mind. Upon pickup, add any one card from a random Packmaster booster to your deck. It would make a collective badge, a collector badge go off more often. Then again, I think this can be one of the seven packs, or Six packs. I, I think this can be one of the packs you've already got, so it's not even that good. But we're definitely removing Flimsy Bash. And I could consider duplicating Shaper's Blessing. Giddy up. Okay, bear in mind, if we double down on the zero-cost stuff, for this boss specifically, it's not going to be that good. So, like, duplicating perception check honestly sounds pretty good. It, it doesn't really make the deck bigger. So if this... If this doesn't work, I'm going to be very sad. But... 
And technically, we could take yet another one. I think that's a bit much, though. Especially because it needs an upgrade. Alright. Duplicate... I'm only a little tempted to duplicate home stretch. If we didn't have the time boss, I would definitely do it. Duplicate seeds of destruction. Now we've already got two. I think that's enough. Let's get another perception check. And if it works the way that I imagine it does, we're going to be happy. I don't think we need to spend on potions. I don't think it does that much in this deck. Uh, and yeah, I think that's everything. Okay. Doing well, thanks. How about you? Not too bad, thank you. The more. Okay. We've got off to the races in starting hand again. Not too surprising when we draw almost half of our deck on turn one. Perception check, giddy up, shapers, and seeds of destruction for imps. And then flick the show off for 13 times 3 damage. Bonus energy this turn as well. Uh, we need to block f only one more. I could actually use the dice to, like, deal more damage with this, but no. Imps, etc. Far more valuable. Perception check. Let's cardistry the Seeds of Destruction, even though this is not the upgraded one yet. Four imps to the discard pile. Draw again. Four imps to the discard pile. Draw again. I could draw yet again, but... I think we'll just get rid of Refrigerate. Nice. Alright, now we get a bit silly. Home stretch, home stretch. Uh, add to the discard pile. Horse, imp, horse, imp, 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 imp. I can't keep up. Oh my god! <laughs> what was that like? Two hundred damage. Oh my god, I don't think we're going to have that much trouble against the uh, time boss, actually. Let's draw more imps. Let's make more imps. And... Shapers. I could kill him right now, but it's funnier if we just do this. Does that count as draw... so did his 12 card count? Oh, the imps. No, I don't think they do, because they don't trigger Hex, even though they're a skill. Um, yeah, it says skill casts when drawn, blah blah blah. Uh, against the Chosen, when we're Hexed, it doesn't trigger it, so I'm pretty sure it won't count. Simply Coco, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Normally I would jump at the chance to take sideboard, but I really don't think we need it in this deck. Let's take the max health. And we're up to 91. Uh, we have to take this now, right? No, we, we have one more, one more chance to get the Sapphire Key. Whenever you apply Frostbite by attacking an enemy, apply one more. Okay, that does nothing in this deck, basically. Good talk. And upgrade the final Seeds of Destruction. Nice.
I think we would have. Uh, I think we would have to get exceptionally terrible draw to get screwed with this deck. So much card draw, and it's uh, quite small. Where is off to the races? It's not in the starting hand. Okay, we need to block seven times three minus five. Uh, I've got, I can draw two cards. Let's do that first. If I draw the Broodmother again, it's good. I guess I could have cardistry the Broodmother to guarantee it. There are better draws. Okay, that's not great. We still need nine block. Five more after cardistry. There we go. Do I want a card to read the show off? Um, maybe. We do get extra energy next turn. And then flick this. Eight from dice is pretty good. It's very good, actually. 22 block. That's already full block. Uh, we can't deal a whole lot of damage this turn because he's intangible. That said, if we had, like, home stretch, the horses would still be doing one each, and there's lots of them. But it's definitely going to be a Seeds of Destruction turn. Get rid of Refrigerate. Draw extra cards next turn, and... We also get extra energy next turn. Good start. Let's get off to the races out of the way. And then... Cardistry... I was going to Cardistry Seeds, but we're not going to be able to draw it and play it. We could Cardistry Home Stretch this time. Sadly, we do not get bonus energy for once. Okay. Uh, I probably should have played Imps, to be honest. The dice give us six. If we ever see that greater than eight, Where is the buff? Perception check. At the start of your turn, if you have no dice, roll 2d8. Nice. 28 is plenty of block. And we need to play one more type of card to get bonus energy next turn. Okay, 45 is a lot. We might have to lose our barrier here. It might be better to set ourselves up to kill him rather than try to block this. We do not have 26 plus 13 block in hand because we get plus 7 from just one of these two. So it's actually going to be, uh, what, 26 plus 6, 32, plus 8 is 40. We need five more block. We've got five energy. Yeah, I can arrange that. Stretch. Show off again. And draw. And I don't care about these burns this turn. Alright, we need more imps. That's a lot of block. Fifteen plus eight... Let's cardistry 
seeds. How much is this? 21, 23, 25. 15 plus 8. We're two off. Uh, it can flick one of the burns. So is that is that it? 23? 15 and 8. Yeah, it is. Which means we can focus on setting ourselves up for later as long as we don't draw more burn. Also, drawing Broodmother helps. Alright, and we'll stop drawing because he's got intangible this turn. Forty-five again. Oh my god. Twelve bonus block from the dice. Yes, please. That's thirty-one. More imps. Okay, we can take five from burn cards. That's four. Forty-four... Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we have to stop here. The imps are only dealing one damage? No! Ah, okay. Cardistry seeds. Home stretch horse. Seeds. What have we got? 27 plus barrier. We're fine. Home stretch, horse. Horse. Even though he's even though he's intangible, he's still taking quite a bit. Shapers again? Yeah, sure. We've got imps coming. I think he's dead now. Very dead now. Bird-faced urn, nice. We heal whenever we play a power, and we've got one, two, three, four powers, and two of them cost zero. So most fights we're healing eight. Uh, art attack is basically deal 24 damage for one energy. Wow, you can make it cost zero. That seems kind of busted. Just deal ten, uh, deal twelve for zero for a plus by itself is pretty strong. That's better than uh, swift strike. But yeah, I think you can just rip this, play it twice, twenty four damage, just like that. I'm not going to take it in this deck though, as much as I really want to confirm how this works. Okay, take the rest site path. Uh, what are we upgrading here? Lick? Throw chips? I mean, we have to upgrade something. We're at full health. I guess I could have taken a fight instead of a rest site, but... That doesn't feel right. Sometimes Flick does some work. Let's upgrade Flick. Atomic Nature. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 14 free block on turn 2 is quite good. Okay. We're definitely doing this. And how about double Shaper's Blessing? Uh, and throw chips does nothing but give us strength, actually. I think we're going to lose our barrier, though. 22 plus 9. We've got 28. So just barely. Two Exploders, two Spikers is maybe the worst configuration we could be up against here. Uh, 20. We're almost full block already. If we find... No, when we find Arasani Broodmother, it's going to be fine. Well, actually, 
There's a one in three that we don't get it, because this is all the draw I can get this turn. But we've got five energy. I could put imps in the draw pile instead of the discard pile. But they're both so small, I think we just be greedy with it instead. All right, there's our block and double seeds. One, two, three, four. Ten imps. And go for the one with less health with the frost. And he's dead. We need to kill this one though, but we've got double home stretch. We only need three block this turn as well. If we draw Broodmother without playing it, that's enough by itself. And... Uh... You know what? We might even get into the discard pile here. Or, for once, I could shuffle it into the draw pile for minus two imps over two cards. But I think it's probably fine this time. <laughs> yup. Third Seeds of Destruction plus. Tempting, but no. No, I don't think that's right. But it is very tempting. Defensive mode? We, ne we we basically never attack. So this is one more huge block card. We don't need to upgrade it. 20 block for 2 energy. I mean, technically that's better than show off, but I don't think it's worth. Especially because we've only got, apart from off to the races, which is a power, we've only got one 2 cost card in the deck. And I like it that way with this deck. So let's just take the health. And I want to smith the throw chips. This just retains. We always want to play it the first time we see it. This is just three damage. Uh, this does literally nothing if they already had frostbite. The only merit... It's an exaggeration to say the only merit to refrigerate is it exhausts because it did do something last time, but I think we'd still be better off without it. Uh, but yeah, throw chips, 10 times X energy damage. That can be decent. Another one? Indeed. Jedi, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Triple Jawworm is a little bit scary. We just have to achieve takeoff quickly here. We don't have a whole lot for focusing damage on one jawworm at a time, though. This would be a good turn for throw chips. It would be like 15 times 5 energy if I used it straight away. But... I think we'll just start with the usual here. We need 24. We need 5 more block. Artistry does it. In which case, let's make imps or make horses. Homestretch gets through the block. It doesn't care about the block. That's only like six damage to each. That's not that small. Alternatively, this is actually like 7 times 1.5. It would barely get through the block. Oh, I could refrigerate one. That's probably not the worst idea. Okay. We're already full block. Fantastic. Not a very good hand otherwise. We've actually got no draw. 
Seriously. Okay, I think it's going to be throw chips this turn. Uh, we want to play Shaper's Blessing as well, but how much damage is this? Oh, it hits random enemies, I forgot. I can't pass up Shaper's Blessing. And then we do this. And he's dead. Alright, I think we're going to be okay. Yikes, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of block. Courtesy of... Perception check. Plus 12. So we're definitely doing this. That's 27. Uh, we need to block 12 more. It's going to have to be show off. And I guess we play giddy up. And always attack the ones at the front and back in Act 3. Because the middle one doesn't double attack for some reason. We haven't had time to make any imps so far. But what do you expect with jawworms? They're on 10 strength now. Cardistry by itself is full block. Never mind the rest that we've already got here. Uh, let's... Uh... 24 times 4. Wait, is that lethal? It is. Wow, glad I upgraded that. We're not taking any of this. Whenever you apply a debuff, return this from the discard part. No. Basically just a strike. We hardly ever play attacks. We don't want to make the deck bigger. Let's just go. And... I guess we're upgrading start gun. And like these other two upgrades effectively do nothing. I couldn't care less about retaining off to the races. I've never not played it when I've seen it. Or maybe once, I forget. Three damage from start gun doesn't really achieve anything either though. But it's probably better. Giant head. Uh, we should be good against giant head. I'm glad we do have one damage, uh, damage card. So, the more cards we play before we attack him, the more damage he takes every turn. And we start with off to the races in hand. He's only going to be vulnerable this turn from Bag of Marbles. 15 times 6 damage is a little bit tempting. But we really just have to get our damage engine going. That means imps. 520 hit points is a lot to get through. Horses aren't really going to do it. But we can draw tons of horses and then play throw chips sometimes. I definitely want, want to get rid of Refrigerate. I definitely want to play Seeds of Destruction next turn as well as this turn. I definitely want to play Off to the Races first. Refrigerate's not that high a priority. We could play Seeds twice this turn. Five Imps into the discard pile. And, oh my god, yes. 15 imps. That's definitely worth skipping Refrigerate. And we do get bonus energy next turn. Okay. So if the imps start at 3... 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 and so on. That's 5. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's already 150 damage of imps. That's a lot of damage, it really is. Evening nerds and foxes. Okie dokie. Uh, let's make some horses. Let's play some other cards before we make some horses. 
so that we get more damage from the start gun, even though it's not much. Let's draw the horses. That's... That, that's a shockingly bad draw. Oh well, we get bonus energy next turn. 13 damage incoming. Uh, we can full block that with one card. I'd prefer to full block it not with two energy though, if possible. We only need nine. So yeah, Shaper's Blessing would be ideal here. I'll definitely home stretch. I could have card street home stretch, but the horse damage doesn't scale that well against the head. It's all about the imps this time. There's our block. We'll play this at the end of turn unless we get better. Oh, cardistry. Cardistry was full block as well. I do want to get rid of the refrigerate. I definitely want to play Shaper's Blessing. There's our block. And I really, really want to make more imps. Here we go. I can't draw more without uh, being out of energy. And we've already got another one on the top deck. I guess I could have cardistried the Seeds of D. Let's put throw chips on the top deck. Actually, no, I want to get rid of uh, Refrigerate. And flick the show off. I guess I did that last part slightly out of order. Alright. Lots of energy. Seeds. Home stretch. Do I want a start gun? Yeah, we could get stuck here. Horse. Imp, imp, imp. Seeds. Horse. Imp. Home stretch. Horse. He's already dying. Imp, imp. Fantastic. This is a pretty strong deck. Whenever you enter a rest site, start the next combat with two bonus energy. We're going to have seven energy on turn one. I'd be shocked if we're not able to just do everything we want. And I turned Awaken down earlier, but since we're up against like the final bosses now, I think, I think we do take this. Two energy, especially after we just got Ancient T-Set, but like... Two energy to basically get an extra life. And we have all this healing as well. And max health. Yeah. And I guess we upgrade the Awaken. Okay. Time for Time Eater. No, off to the races on turn one makes me sad. Do I actually have no card draw as well? Bruh. Seriously? Card draw, card draw. Well, I guess... Technically there's only two card draw. That works directly on the turn it's played. In the deck. Still, this is like literally almost half our deck here. Anyway, we can get rid of Awaken this turn. Play Seeds. Set up playing Seeds again. Giddy up. We've got seven energy. One, two, three, four. We can do whatever we want. The only thing that counts here is card count. I can't play 12 cards, so we're going to be stuck with 12 minus X cards that we can play next turn. 
We're pretty much definitely playing show off and shape is blessing next turn, I think. And off to the race. Uh, okay, I need to be a bit careful here. High value cards only. It's only three. We could probably get rid of refrigerate. And weirdly enough, I don't want to play start gun. Or I could throw chips for 45 damage. I know our damage is going to accelerate later, but... For all we know, every little bit's going to count. Now, I think I want to get rid of the refrigerate. And just leave the card count at four. Okay. 48 damage. Can we even keep our barrier here? We start with 14 block this turn. We don't have any dice. Active. So this is 7, 8, 9, plus 17. 26. 36, 40. We're 8 short. Seriously? We're 8 blocks short. We're already going to lose barrier. Bruh. Doesn't feel right without the boss music. Okay. Um, we can draw two, four, six. Which means we draw one from the discard pile. I don't like those odds. And that... We're having to add a lot to the card count to do that. So I think we just... We could show off just for the card draw for next turn. I definitely want to play Perception Check and Shapers. And that leaves us at 6. 21, 23... Yeah, it's 40. We're going to lose our barrier. So the only question is, do I value drawing two extra cards next turn over keeping this down at six? We're guaranteed to draw these if I don't play show off. Off to the races, perception check, flick. Okay, that's a terrible turn. Maybe I even draw something. How much energy do we have left? Three. The block doesn't do anything. So if we get off to the races, I think I'll just play it for the dexterity and to get rid of it. There it is. Okay, only four cards next turn. And we draw these three plus something else. Eight times three. That's pretty nasty. And no block. Oh, and he gives us the negative card draw as well. I think I... Hmm. I'm happy that I've got the power out of the way, but maybe I should have played Shoah. So we draw one, two more cards this turn. We'd be at seven instead of five cards. Which means we could have Shoah, we could have Shaper's Blessing, we could have Broodmother. I really don't want to take 8 times 3 and lose most of the plated armor this turn. But we've only we can only play 4 cards. I want to play perception check, seeds of destruction, horse and biggest block card that we've got. 8 times 3 17 21 if we get show off, we can block most of it. If we get shapers, we make up for losing a bit of the plated. And if we get imps and we find out that that adds count, we just abandon. <laughs> Alright, horse it is. Imps do not count, and that's shapers blessing. That's pretty good. 16 and 6 is 24. That's full block. Thank god for that. 
Um, if I play two cards, our turn ends and he gains strength and he does get through... He does a little bit of damage to us and he gets through the plated armor. Minus one plated armor. That's actually good because... Uh, what is it called? Ancient goes up to six plated armor, but it adds two every time. So we're going to go up to seven instead without having to play Shaper's Blessing again. So yeah, bring it. Oh, ten times three? What? Well, we still get the seven. Okay. We play Seeds of Destruction every chance we get. Let's play it twice this turn. And I'm not going to go all in on the horse damage. We're just looking to play Seeds of Destruction. Ooh. Do I want to play Show Off? So we draw more next turn. We're guaranteed to draw 5 to 12 block here. Let's just get the... Uh, let's get the imps going. And we'll leave it at that. Fifteen times three. Our imps are up to eleven damage. This is twenty. That's pretty good. Uh, I could play it twice. What is this? Forty-five. I think it's fine to. Wow. I think it's fine to just toss it into the discard pile. Ran uh, draw pile randomly instead of cardistry. And we'll cardistry the show off. And just pass. Alright, here we go. Imp, 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 and furthermore, imp. Always gonna play shapers if I have the chance. 22 plus 9 is more than he's attacking for. Do I... Hmm. Yeah, I, I want more imps. We're going to end our turn and give him strength here. But our imps are getting stronger. Much stronger. I don't think he's going to live long after calling us foolish. 36 damage incoming. We, we really just have to block and wait. That's all it takes. Let's make sure we have show off every time. And that's full block already. I could also play the Broodmother to make sure we have it next turn. Or soon, anyway. I mean, it probably is next turn. <laughs> you know what? I shouldn't have played Giddy Up. Yeah, adding horses to the deck is questionable. We get more energy if I play throw chips here. Next turn. Imp, 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 imp. Maybe we just go for it now. I think we do. I think we can kill him. Home stretch. Horse. Imp, imp. Horse. Imp, 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 imp. He's dead. And we're at full health. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, we'll act for absolutely murderous. As it often tends to do to a deck that full healthed its way through Act 3. Uh, I guess we can upgrade off to the races, and there's literally nothing left in the deck that there's any point in upgrading. The only non-green ca uh, non -green card we've got left would require another source of Frostbite for the upgrade to make a difference. So this is a full green deck, effectively. Nice. What are we buying? More health? Oh, start with plated armor. Don't mind if I do. Remove a card. What's our worst card? Is there even a card that we want to remove? 
I don't think there is. The cinder's been. I mean... I could remove the refrigerate. It does not do that much. I guess it can get rid of an artifact. Remove Ascender's Bane, indeed. Legend of Gurk. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Blurry Gain Block. Now that's interesting. So every time we play a horse after this, we gain a bit of block. I don't think it's what we're looking for, though. I am a little worried about the scaling of our block maybe not being enough for this act. But what are you going to do at this point? I don't think taking another especially unupgraded broodmother is going to help. I mean, it might help a little bit, but you know, this definitely helps. Four plated armor at the start of each combat, and that's all we can afford. Pair is also... Eh, it's only 10 and we're already at 97. We, we definitely take the thing that prevents hit point loss. The fact that we've got a regen potion certainly doesn't hurt. Oh man, we don't get the ancient tea set against the big bad boss. Honestly though, a lot of the time the spear and shield are the bigger problem. They tend to chunk away your health before the boss, and you could have beaten the boss if not for that. No draw. Wait, no, we do have draw. We've got home stretch. Rain in might be really good. Maybe, yeah. Um, it's questionable. I think we're going to go much more all-in on the imps as opposed to the horses to kill the heart because they don't count as playing a card. The tree final boss is not what you'd expect. Like right lava spit. Um, We have like no block in hand. It's only 12 damage this time but we really want to keep our barrier. So let's start with... We've got 8 energy, wow. Let's start with double home stretch. That's... That's a terrible, terrible, no good, bad draw. That is maybe the worst draw we could have got. We don't have our block cards, and we don't have off to the races. Yeah, I think that is physically, like, quite possibly the worst draw we could have got. In an 18 card deck where we see 8 of our card, eight of our 18 cards on turn 1, and we drew 4, well, we drew like 3 because we had to recycle the home stretch. Bruh. Just, just how? Okay, so we're gonna lose... We're gonna lose our barrier. We don't lose any, uh... Plated armor yet. We're obviously playing Perception Check. Giddy up. Imps. Imps. Awaken. And probably get rid of refrigerate first. Did you play Chrono Trigger? No, actually. Couldn't get into it. Uh, that's a lot of damage. Sasuga, Shield and Spear. Uh, how much energy do we have? Four... So if I play off to the races and then show off, 
And then we draw this. We can't play these. I think I have to skip off to the races this turn. And that's terrible. Fifty. This is forty, this is twenty-one. Plus six, fifty-six. Uh so twenty-one, thirty-one, forty-one, fifty-one. We're only gonna take one hit. I'm gonna go down to five plated and back up to seven next turn. Oh wait, I have another seven. Does that help? Fifty six uh, 62, 63. Oh, you're kidding. This is full block. The flick doesn't achieve anything. So I'm going to keep the off to the races. I'm pretty sure it doesn't add... Oh, it does add frost. Even if it gets blocked. Okay, then. It's a very small thing, but not nothing. Imps, 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 imps. Four energy, loads of cards, lots of zero cost cards, off to the races in hand. Uh, but that's a lot of damage coming at us. We can flick for zero cost to turn around. He's going to be attacking for like 40, which means we need like 30 block. We do have a 12 bonus block from dice. I could Cardistry the Broodmother and then draw it. Oh, I should have played this first. No, I think I'd rather do other things this turn. I don't care about the strength, so the order mistake isn't that important. But still. Do I want a home stretch? It's really more that the horse is a great early fight damage and the imps a great late fight damage. And they're not going to add up to like a hundred. Well, not very quickly anyway. So I really want to play more imps. I want to draw that block. And it's probably just going to be block imp imp. And then flick to turn around. And that also gives us collector's badge for energy next turn. And it's full block. So far so good. So far shockingly good, honestly. Can we keep it up? Five energy, two burns in hand, no flick. 24 plus 16. I think we take less damage if we turn around. In fact, I'm sure of it. This does not turn us around because it targets random enemies. Not even 50-50. Uh, if I play this and then draw, it's going to give us block again. And we've got the energy too. If I one, two, three, four, five, how much damage? Lots of damage. I can't turn around either. It's plus two block per block card. If I play this first. But I can only play like one, two, three. It's like minus what? Uh, one, two, three, four, and then five again. That might not be too bad. Okay. And then brood mother again. Okay, we're taking some damage, but. No big. Also, plus four strength. Oh, we actually full block. Wow. Okay, that's a lot of damage. We need to turn around. 
Or just kill him if we've got a million imps. We could... We've got quite a bit of energy. I really want to draw cards here. Lots of cards. Okay. And we can flick one of the burns and turn around. Alternatively... If I had a more expensive card, we could probably kill this guy with a flick. Well, that'd be a three-cost card. Okay, first things first, let's turn around and see how much damage exactly this is. Uh, 12 times 4. 48. We're blocking more than 30. 42, as opposed to 48. I can full block this, or I could make more imps. The whole point is to get through the fight with lots of uh, with lots of health, and we do ha still have a bunch of imps coming. Yeah, let's block, and we'll also draw that next turn most likely. Okay, this is actually going ridiculously well. It's close, though. It's very close. Uh, starter gun almost kills this guy. Homestretch, horses, and starter gun will definitely kill him. There's also imps coming. I think we have lethal. Let's uh, put more imps in the draw pile, not the discard pile. Actually, I think it made no difference. I could have had plus one imp. Actually, no, we're going to draw the burn at some point, and they only draw one. We have horses, though. Oh. <laughs> That's way more lethal than I thought it was. Okay, this is going ridiculously well. Aurichalcum is not great at this point, but I'll take it. I can't think of a single turn where it's going to be good, actually. Against the heart. Lex Potion... I'm definitely not taking that over Strength Potion. Defensive mode plus. We are a little bit short on block, I feel like. Especially against the heart. Yeah, I think I take this. As opposed to plus two max health. We're never going to get to heal again. Alright. This is it. And we have some block in hand. We can keep our barrier and plated for now. Unfortunately, again, we don't have off to the races in the start hand. That's what we get for going all the way to 19 cards. We do have card draw and six energy. I think I'll do this first. Got to be careful about the beat o death. Keep our barrier. We've got a card in hand to get our block back up if necessary. That's not great. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. We can play everything. Let's do the block first. Order doesn't matter here unless we let the beat of death shred our barrier. Imps and start gun. And I guess th uh, flick. Okay, could be worse. Should have used strength. What did we miss? Like two damage, four damage. Okay, that could be worse. Um, 13 times... Uh, 15 times 3 is 45. We've got 18. I fear our little defensive bonuses here are going to get shredded. I'm going to have to dig, which means digging for, like, the burn and void cards. I don't like it. 
I don't like it at all. I could horse first, but it's only two draw. Slimed and void. Okay, good, good, good start. Okay, that's a bit better. Cardistry shapers. Puts us up to 28 plus 6, 34. Oh man. We're just barely gonna lose our barrier. Three times fourteen is forty-two. We're one hit point short. I don't know if I play Giddy Up for this fight. I think we just get imps and imps and imps and imps. And we're still going to have access to some horses. But not having a way to gain block automatically when we play the horses, like every turn, not so good. Alright, since we're losing the barrier anyway, I don't care if we like maybe lose one more plated armor. Okay, that's a lot of damage. I'm glad I took defensive mode. Yeah, we're just going to play all our block cards here. Okay. Finally doing off to the races. This card's... this, this hand is pretty terrible, actually. I kind of want to show off as well, even though we don't get to exhaust refrigerate. It's one more card, two more card draw next turn. As opposed to never drawing this garbage again. Alternatively, I could play Broodmother Refrigerate. Then we get two more strength. Not that strength matters much in this deck. Uh, and I never see Refrigerate again. And we get Broodmother next turn. I feel good about guaranteeing some block next turn, even if it's not that big. We also trigger Collector's Badge this way. Haven't found the rare power that makes imps when a non-imp is exhausted. No, we were looking for it the whole playthrough. Sad. Uh, but yeah, that's basically my only block in hand. Uh, I can draw it twice. I mean, play it twice this turn. Cardistry, Brood, Horse, Brood. We've got 40 out of 60, like 45 out of 60 damage coming in here. Uh, I probably should have used the regen potion by now. Imps. I think despite the beat of death, Giddy Up is probably worth it. It also heals us a tiny bit. But when we had other priorities, it was definitely at the bottom of the list. Okay, 47. We do have a decent amount of block this turn. Not that much, because we only get plus 7 from these once. Maybe I should have... No, we have to block. More energy next turn. Okay. More imps, please. And for once, we're not being attacked. Drawing Broodmother and getting five against the Beat of Death is very helpful, to say the least. I really want to make more imps. And maybe get more plated armor this turn. The damage from the horses is pretty trivial. 
at this scale. So I think I'll skip the home stretch. Put some horses here. Draw them. Draw some more stuff. That's not a good draw. Gain some block. Draw. That's what we're looking for. Or one of the things we're looking for. More imps. Draw. Artistry. More imps. And I can't afford to draw more this turn. Uh, throw chips does a little damage and gives us the bonus energy next turn. Wait, it hit an artifact? Why? How did we just remove an artifact? Oh, because... Because he's got Frostbite, so just scratching him got rid of an artifact because it was trying to apply more. Nice. Keep up the good work, Frostbite. I take back everything I said. Actually, I don't think we have any other way to debuff him, so... It doesn't really matter, does it? We can't weaken him. That's one of the biggest weaknesses of this deck, weirdly enough. I think I had one chance to take a weakened card for the entire run, and it was not a good one. Hearthstone, but with horses, indeed. 49 damage. We might actually win this. Might. Uh, I can all- I can 50-50 getting Broodmother again. This turn. I could also... Wait, how much energy do I have left? Three? Okay, let's just draw. And there's the show-off. So it's gonna be... Definitely Shaper's Blessing. Maybe I should have put the Broodmother here so that we draw it again. That would be nine plus five. And I could have made more imps this turn. We've got 39 block. We're going to take 10 damage. Uh, we're going to take like one damage if I do this. There's also the beat of death, so it's a bit more. But I think it's worth. We have to actually kill him. Oh, that's a lot. This is why we have to kill him. 6 times 15. 6 times 15 is 90. It's fine, we just need like 40 block to not die this turn. Artist three Brood Mother. Draw the Brood Mother. Brood Mother again. That's 45 plus 44 is like 89. Oh no, are we dead? Should I have. Should I have played Starting Gun first? I don't think it necessarily would have changed anything. Are we dead? We're regening for one. So it's 45 plus 45 is 90. Is it exact lethal? Really? Is it going to be exact lethal? Don't you have that res power? I do, actually. We've got 20 health after this. Okay. We shouldn't necessarily consider that a blank check to play more cards this turn. Because he's doing big multi-attack. Like, if I play three more... Well, not three more. We're not dead if I play too many more cards this turn, but it's going to seriously chunk into our revive health. I don't think we can play more cards this turn. Let it be exact lethal. Now we have 20. And no, well, practically no plated for the moment. That's not a very... Okay, that's a really, really bad hand. We have to spend two energy to get... to get block against the beat of death this turn. 
and then we can draw to our heart's content. Imp, imp, imp. Shapers? Well, I can't draw again in any case. We need more block immediately next turn. Actually, how many... How many imps does it take to kill him at this point? We've only got two. We've got 61 damage from imps. And then we need like four more ever to kill him. But we probably die next turn. Ooh. Okay. Um... I don't think... Any of the damage that's non-imp matters at this point from us. I think we play the Broodmother to make sure we get the free block next turn and have the opportunity to play this. I seriously doubt that it's possible to get enough block or lethal next turn, to be honest. So we need 154, we've got 61 here. We need like... Hold on, 31 plus 32... 63 plus 33 is 96... Plus 34, 130... Plus 35. Okay, yeah, so like 5 imps, wasn't it? If we draw like... Seeds of Destruction... Preferably Seeds of Destruction twice and card draw. We can get lethal. If we do, we really have to count what we're capable of here. 91. Okay. So four imps... Four imps into the draw pile, if we catch them all, is definitely lethal. I don't think we're blocking 51. Especially not with this hand. Okay, so we don't give a crap about Beat of Death here. We just go for it. Four imps into the draw pile. I guess we can home stretch. We're going to do it anyway, right? Double home stretch? I don't think it matters. At least one home stretch. Okay, one more imp. There are two imps out of seven cards. We can draw four. Oh, we could actually probably kill with the horses even. We got him. Not even close. Oh my god. GG indeed. Use the starting hand for the last bit of damage. Indeed, indeed. Can't believe we actually got there. If we had that power that creates an imp every time we exhaust a non-imp card, uh, yeah, that would have been hilariously good. But we were, yeah, it was pretty close uh, to being as good as that, kind of. And it was good enough to beat A17. Which, from what I vaguely recall of the Ascension levels, is pretty pretty damn similar to A20. Elites have more challenging movesets and abilities. Okay, so that one's significant. 19 is bosses have more challenging movesets and abilities, and then there's a double boss at the end. Okay. Let's do it again. Claw Pack. Uh, pretty much guaranteed I'm going to take Claw Pack here. We're stuck with Anomaly, Bardic Inspiration, and Sentinel. Okay. Claw Pack's pretty good. Board games is a bit... unreliable, mostly. Although it did give us all that bonus block last run. 
Spheres is pretty good. Ironclad ideals gives us access to strength, but if we're clawing all the time, how much does strength really matter? Well, it'll buff the damage of our little exhausty claws. Thank you, Jedi. It's a toss-up between spheres and ironclad ideals here. We do tend to struggle with a claw deck to have enough block, so I th think I like the idea of frost orbs if we can get them. Goddess of explosions. I love this this pack. I don't remember what cosmic uh, cosmos command has really. Exhaust cards to gain power. Keep control. Oh, yeah, no, that's not going to work with what I want to do here, if possible. Utility is pretty good as well. If I remember. But Goddess is really, really, really good. Choose a rare colorless card to obtain 18 damage. Damn. But if we get that one card. If we get that card. Probably going to go for the Burning Elite here. It's a lot of damage though. If we transform a card, we get rid of one bad card as well. We might get a terrible card as a result. What is this hat? Oh my god. Don't you get Shiv Claws? Yes. Do we transform or do we... Oh, it's a colorless. That could be Apotheosis. Could be Hand of Greed. Could be Panache, which would be good in a claw deck. 18 damage, though. I'm going to risk it. Max health going into Hexaghost doesn't have to be as good. So do we take Panache, even though it's a bit speculative, or do we just go for the solid Master of Strategy? This almost... This gives us a good chance to draw almost our entire deck on turn one early in the game. If we get, like, uh, Claw and Dagger, uh, no, Cloak and Claw, um, that's three cards towards Panache by itself. Honestly, pretty tough choice. I wish we could look at the packs while we're picking a card. I don't really know what's in Bardic Inspiration. Goddess of Explosions has one really, really, really good expensive card. And some decent cheap ones. I think it, I'm going to play it safe and go with Master of Strat here. We did just take a bunch of damage after all. Question marks... might give us Snake or something. I think I stick with fights this time. Reject Panache, embrace Panasha. Panasha is pretty amazing. Okay, we can do the combo here for exactly 12 block. Cardistry defend, rummage defend. And this would be a garbage hand if not for Master of Strat. So if this was Panache, we'd just be like... Strike would effectively be our whole turn here. But because we didn't, we can actually deal some damage while he's not attacking. Seventeen. There's no way we can kill him. Uh, next turn, he is vulnerable. We've got plenty of damage in hand. We only need Rummage to kill him next turn. Oh. Well, I just made it so we we're not guaranteed. Order Lamel. 
I love smithing hammer. We need a claw. To make sure the claw deck will be any good. Polar applies frostbite. That's pretty good too, but I'm more interested in the defensive orbs. If we're doing a claw deck. I'm pretty sure this pack does have them. Polar, polar, blaze, frost. If you have three plus unique orbs, channel one frost. Also, just do it. And if you upgrade it, it also triggers its passive. One energy to just get a frost and nothing else kind of sucks, though. At the start of your turn, channel a random orb. That would be fantastic. Channel one blaze. Polar frost blaze. It's not great as a sort of source of frost, but if we have it with frost conversion, that's actually really good. Maybe I shouldn't have taken spheres. Well, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of these cards at this point. Angry is basically half half of the aggression stance. If you end your turn in a stance, gain strength and dex. Holy crap. What is serene? In this stance, block is not removed at the start of your turn. Upon exiting, double your block. Wow. Exit this stance at the start of your next turn. Okay, not that good. Especially not for two energy. Yeah, I don't think we've got access to... We don't really have access to frost orbs. That's kind of sketchy. What a hand. Uh, 12 plus 18. 3, 4, 5 strikes. We can't kill this thing. We're just taking 7 damage. Strike, 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 claw, Ascender's Bane. And then everything else in the draw pile, everything in the draw pile is Rummage, Block, and Master of Strat. So this literally is the worst possible hand. We did it. <laughs> we got the worst possible hand. Can I kill this guy this turn at least? 24 plus 3. 27. 13 plus 9. Yeah, we can do it. And... Boop. Uh, Searing Claw is kind of questionable until we have a Claw deck. Actually... Oh no, the only... I remember now, the only reason this was good was because Necronomicon. Yeah, we're not going to be able to upgrade it a million times. Enter Calm. Doesn't do anything by itself. Life Drain. Deal 8 damage, gain temporary hit points for half of the unblocked damage dealt. Hmm, pretty questionable for 2 energy. Baby Wallop? Indeed. Uh, I don't think I take any of these. Wow, wait, 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 wait. If we upgrade Searing Claw a number of times, does it get, like, sharpen a million? That would be pretty good. Sharpen is just the vanilla mechanic of Claw's deal more damage. Uh, just given a name. I don't think we can take any of this, though.
Like, th honestly, this should probably cost, like, one. Yeah, it's not good enough. Can I upgrade anything? I can. If I speculatively take Relax and upgrade it, and we retain, we at least don't keep drawing it, but no, it's common. Let's just skip. Okay. Double Claw? I think Double Claw is the way to go here. It's less damage up front, but... Oh, we can actually play all of that. Uh, but yeah, now the Claw does 7 for 0. Master O Strat. We could rummage. I think we can full block and still win this, not take damage for the whole fight. Since Claw does 7. Yep. Mood Swing or a second Claw? It's probably going to be a second Claw. Uh, chain Reaction. The Fallout mechanic. Whenever you play a power, all creatures with Fallout take damage. I've never come close to a deck where this would be good. Uh, and had the opportunity to do it. <laughs> Mood Swing. Draw two cards, discard two cards. If you are in Angry, enter Calm, otherwise enter Angry. That's pretty funny. But yeah, it's definitely going to be Second Claw. I think I will take the question marks, because we might get, like, remove or upgrade. Relic? R Relic? Relic? The boot. <sighs> okay, we're going to have to rest now. Remove a card, lose seven hit points. We can't afford that. Let's just gain free gold. As much as I'd like to get rid of Rummage. It's not terrible early on. I really don't care about upgrading Claws, even in a, in a Claw deck. So yeah, we don't really have an upgrade queue right now, and we desperately need to rest. Okay, so we're going to be locked into one elite. Do we gamble on the good face? I think we kind of have to. When you enter a question mark room, gain 50 gold. Oh, not bad. We do have a shop coming up here, so if we decide not to go to the burning elite, we're going to have another 50 gold. Oh, we're locked into two more elites. I didn't even see this one here. That's pretty scary, actually. I think that means we have to rest here. And again, our upgrades are not very enticing. Pray for Waffle, indeed. Bottled Lightning. What skill do we want to... We can start with Master of Strat. That's fantastic. I might upgrade it now. And we literally can't ever get punished for that. I guess it counts as one card against the time boss. That's it. Okay, can we get cheap full block? Nope. No cardistry. I don't really want to spend three energy just to block one more. Especially against the thief. I guess we could rummage for, like, cardistry or claw. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be damage. Okay, that is an awful, awful, terrible, no bad, no, no good hand. What is this? Maybe I shouldn't have rummaged. Silly me. Should have realized I would have drawn the only block in the rest of the deck. This is technically block. And 
get out of here. Another claw? Is three too many? I don't think three is too many. Gain seven block, exhaust a card, shuffle a copy of it into your draw pile. It's kind of weird. Deal seven to all, channel one blaze. Blaze is... needs to be evoked to do anything, kind of like a dark orb. So that's not that good, especially not to start with. Three is exactly how many you need? Okay. Um, so it's going to be three energy to block. I don't think... No, I definitely want to see defend next turn. There's not enough block in the rest of the draw pile. What did I just do? Oh no. Focus. Can't attack. Two defends. Not bad turn. That's lethal. Another claw? I don't think so. Wave motion cannon's really good. Block and AoE. It just it's just that it happens next turn for the damage. Deal eight damage, enter a random stance. <laughs> oh my god. That sounds horrifying. What do we got here? Lagavulin. Claws are good against Lagavulin. Uh, three plus five. We can sharpen twice this turn. And I might keep the Master of Strat for a future turn. And that's not very good. Next turn we have 12, 13, 14 block. Unless I rummage something up this turn. 14's not that bad. I can only hit for 4 damage this turn. Maybe we wait. Get rid of Ascender's Bane. That's Divinity, the die at the end of the round. Random stance, can you get the 3 times damage? Uh, it's a specific card gives you that debuff that kills you. There is no meme die next turn. <laughs> okay, let's set up wave motion cannon the next turn and claw. It's probably as good of a setup as we're going to get. Master of Strat. Wave motion, double defend. And I think we might attack potion here. Uh... If life drain continued to co continued to cost zero, that's going to scale worse when he de-strengths us. What's this? Thick of the fight. Deal twelve damage to a random enemy for each living enemy costs one less energy for each living enemy. So it's just going to be a double strike after this turn. I think we take flick, even though it does less up front. Okay, we can block 10, strike and claw, if we rummage, yeah, no. This might go badly. Cardistry the wave motion? Cardistry the claw, I think we have to accelerate our damage. Cardistry claw, rummage claw, wave motion, yeah, 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 yeah. So now he's down to 19. He's dead. Okay, that's fantastic. Claw is best. We could take free space and just treat it as like a one-off extra draw. I've never had an opportunity to use Sealed Sword. Honestly, it doesn't look good enough, the result from this, to be worth the trouble. Unless you already have lots of exhaust in the deck. Flurry of blows. We're not stance dancing, so no. 
I think we just take free space here. And I don't think we can necessarily beat a burning elite. And we want to shop anyway. Decent with Snekawai? Yeah, exactly. Sadistic nature. Oh, kunai. It's going to be kunai. That is 268. Can we also get infinite claws? Well, I'm taking kunai regardless. Can't afford a removal. We're not going to take fume. Yeah, it's going to be infinite claws. That's pretty good. Like infinite blades, but every time you use it, your claws get stronger. I could double claw this turn. I think I will. Artistry, claw, master, claw, claw. That gives us dexterity and strike. Not a bad start. He doesn't get mad if we play powers. Claw, strike, strike. Don't play this, he'll get stronger. And this is where we have to start thinking. We'll probably play wave motion. It'll give him three strength, but it'll net block six if we kill him next turn. We're obviously playing claw. Uh, he's going to take seven from wave motion cannon. It would be nine if I upgraded it. I could... Cardistry, wave motion, rummage, wave motion. We would block 18 plus 4 is 22. And deal 10, 24 damage. Uh, he's going to gain 2, 4, 6 damage. I think it's worth It's definitely worth. Except that he dealt more damage than I thought because we were vulnerable. So that strength buff was a bit multiplied. I guess the boot isn't that bad since we're doing infinite, uh, infinite claws. Second wave motion cannon? Or show off? Channel 1 Frost. Okay, okay, I'm listening. Gain Inspiration 50 for each channeled orb. Increases the damage and block of the next card played by a percentage. Stacks additively. That's pretty cool, actually. Okay, all of a sudden I'm a fan of Bardic Inspiration. What's this? Draw a card, gain energy equal to its cost. Now that is one way that you could potentially play a six cost card. Um, but yeah, we're definitely taking Inspiring Song here. A little bit of Frost is very, very good against uh, Hexaghost. Most of his turns deal just a little bit of damage and you need to race him. I don't think we're too worried about our damage output with the three claws and infinite claws. I don't really care about gaining more inspiration here. It'd be nice if this also gave us block. But I think we either upgrade infinite claws or the wave motion cannon. It's probably going to be wave motion. Or even master of strat. Sift plus seems broken. Um, it just draws one more card after you do the thing. Okay, I think wave motion, definitely. Let's go. What do you got? Claw. Definitely strike, strike for the dexterity. Do we want to keep free space, or do we value 6 damage? The claws are going to scale, so I think we value the card draw more, and we get to claw more, like, one more time this turn, as it turns out. 
That's pretty good. We do have our best block card. That's not saying much for turn two, probably. Uh, probably should consider a power potion. I don't think we need it. Okay. We can block 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, that's already full block. Do I take a little bit of damage? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, plus 6. We take 1 damage if I set up everything here. Oh, or not, because... Because I forgot about inspiration. Even better. The Ghost Claw does count as a claw, so... If you're hitting one target, the order doesn't matter. What are, what are we going to rummage? Cardistry. Let's do this again next turn. Okay. So this is full block. Inspire the next claw. 19 damage. Maybe I should have ghost clawed first. So far so good. One more frost and we would have full block here. I could free space to keep it and potentially draw, like, Inspiring Song or something. But... We might draw the burn as well. That's not terribly likely. But yeah. Okay. Rummage? We can play three attacks this turn, no matter what I draw. That's fine. Eight times two. Oh, that's getting easy to block. Second uh, infinite clause would mean we only need one attack drawn each turn to gain dexterity. Okay, let's... Uh... Let's Inspiring Defend, and that's already full block, and then we can do what we like with the rest of our turn. And we're going to take two damage here. Unless it's lethal, which it is. We perfected him. Very good. Unrelenting Form could be pretty good. We're playing our claws for zero. It's not so much about the energy as it is the card draw. Once we get down to two or fewer cards each turn. What's the rest? Deal five damage to a random enemy five times. Exit your stats. Choose an attack in hand to modify. Name gains claw and gain a ghost claw. I mean, it's just strikes and rummage, which we're trying to get rid of anyway. Gain 10 block, enter serene. I think... This has to combo, is the thing. I think we take unrelenting form. Busted crown. How badly do we need energy? A little bit, since we took unrelenting form. I can't make it cheaper. Also, we have Master of Strat turn one every time, so energy is pretty good. I really don't want to take Ectoplasm. This does make it harder to find the right cards, but so does this. Random upgrade, five health, pick a card, 50 gold. It's pretty weak. I think we take the crown. Very lethal, indeed. One, two, three, four, one. 
I don't think we can go after the Burning Elite here, which means we're stuck with it on Act 3 if we're trying to heart. Alternatively, I could cop out and just make the Ascension number go up. We don't have much gold, so I could go this way. Or, yeah, all the way to the left or all the way to the right. There's an optional elite on the left path. I think I like that. Uh, but first I'm going to need a bit of a break, actually. Alright, uh, I guess... Do we have words on stream? Is it functional today? Looks like it is. All right. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon for Act 2. If you wipe in Act 4, you still unlock the next. Yeah, but you have to beat the boss of Act 3. So if you take a risk, if it's like on the fence if you're going to get through Act 3, you and you want to get the ascensions up. Sometimes it's worth just giving up the heart. Okay, back soon.
Okay. Nicely done. Let's continue with Spire, shall we? Boop. Inspiring Double Claw. Well, we definitely want to play Master of Strat before he hexes us. Let's do that. Okay, that's a really, really good start. Unrelenting Form, Infinite, Claws, Frost, Claw, Claw. I don't know if we're ever getting down to a hand size of two. We'll see. He's not attacking again, but we've only got two attacks in hand. Anything other than an attack that we play makes him angry. Next turn, uh, we play like Claw, Double Strike, and immediately draw cards. Unless we make uh, Dazed in the draw pile right now. I think we have to let Free Space go. Okay, that's a lot of damage. Ghost Claw, 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 Strike, Strike. And we can block six whole damage this turn. Make it eight. Uh, I would definitely like to rummage for more block. That is not more block. And we do not have lethal. Rip. Minus nine. Um, so next turn, we're guaranteed Inspiring Song and Defend. I can put him on 15, and that gives us one daze, and we might have lethal. I think that's probably right. If I... Cardistry, the wave motion, we draw two dazes, inspiring song, defend, and question mark. We can't kill him that turn, probably. If we get a claw, we can. But we don't want to minimize the odds of that. Okay. Six. That's not enough. Uh, we can inspire defend. So between the dexterity and the inspire, we get 10 block. And this one is also 10 block? Wait, what? The next card you play has its damage and block increased by 50%. Didn't we just spend that? Apparently not. Gain inspiration for each channeled orb. Oh, that's really good. Oh, and that's lethal. Nice. Good job. Unrelenting form. I don't think we take either of these. We do have the question mark, which makes the busted crown that much better. I didn't even realize. Well, that much less bad. Let's put it that way. We get to pick from two cards instead of three. Not going to take the spooky ghosts this time. Duplicate a card. I think it's going to be infinite blades. Yeah, let's sharpen two and get two prox, uh, two count on kunai at the start of every turn after we've drawn them seems good to me and I'll probably make one of them innate or maybe not since we've got an innate uh, master of strategy so we're going to draw it on turn one quite often okay five energy to block 22 damage and try and set ourselves up for the future we can inspire a defend but because we don't have decks yet, it's only 7 blocks still. So that's 9 out of 22. 
defend again. I don't care about rummage or strike here, so let's just do all that. So now we proc kunai just from this. And it also gets the claw up to 9 damage. Also, the boot is chipping in. A little bit. Um, I can actually trigger Unrelenting Form this turn. Which is fantastic. And then we play Wave Motion. And that's it. Probably should upgrade the uh, Unrelenting Form. I would have been able to play another Defend there. One off. Cardus three the claw. Draw it again. Seventeen and oh that's very lethal. Fantastic. Another inspiring song. That means we're gonna get our frost count up, our, our channeled orb count up much quicker. Yeah, this card has actually been quite good. I'll take another one. And... When we reach the rest site, if we're healthy-ish, uh, it's probably going to be unrelenting form. It's going to get upgraded. Oh, that is a horrible, terrible, no good, bad draw. Except we can maybe play unrelenting form and more, almost empty our hand. Unrelenting... I think we have to... To maximize our chance of getting decent block this turn. Play Cardistry last here. That is pretty bad. No, I take it back. That is literally the worst draw. That we could have gotten. Do we use the draw potion? I think so. I could get plus one dex by using strike, but... We're taking seven damage. I don't want that. I don't have any healing. There we go. Much better. And rip free space. That's a lot of damage. We've, we can block 24 plus 4. That's going to have to do. We'll also draw wave motion. Okay, that's pretty good. And this is where I really, really wish I had the upgraded unrelenting form because we could play infinite claws as well. Okay, pretty straightforward turn here. If I cardistry the claw, we might have trouble blocking next turn. One, two, three, four block cards out of 13. No, I want to cardistry the defend. Oh. We're going to draw it. Oops. It's fine. And there's some dexterity, but now there's only three block cards in here. Okay, that's pretty good. Or is it? One, two, three, four. I think we inspire. And then use the inspiration on these two. That's pretty... yeah, that's full block. Nice. Uh, normally, normally I would Ghost Claw first, but we get 50% bonus damage from this Claw. And he's not dead yet. 
I could rummage to kill him. Or I could get another infinite clause. I don't think we care after after the knight is dead, whether we have one or two infinite claws. Okay, I want to empty my hand so that we draw two. And then maybe we can get some more block if she's still alive. There we go. No, I don't think we're taking either of these. We don't have the synergy, like exhaust synergy for a ritual site. So we're definitely going here. 45 health is not terrible. I really, really want the extra energy from Unrelenting Form. And can we take an Elite here? We've got a Rest Site before the next Elite afterwards. So probably maybe. That's pretty scary. Let's drink our Power Potion. Explosive Form for zero energy on turn one. You'd better believe it. It is going to be at the end of three turns that it starts doing anything, but it's going to be doing a lot. <laughs> Whenever you draw a card, gain one block. That would have been nice with our last uh, playthrough. Although it is a little bit expensive. And Void Engine... Kind of good, but we need the Frost first, really. Let's get Explosive Form. Do we want to draw more cards? There's nothing that it's bad to draw. What can we do with what we've got? Uh, we can block not very much. Okay. Let's draw three. And... That's still not great. We're definitely doing this. Block nine, deal nine to everyone next turn. We're definitely clawing the guy at the back. We could spend one energy to draw. Or we could rummage and draw one. Pay two energy to draw one that's reduced by one. If we get a claw, we're sad. Except that it does damage. We get to keep the free space for later if we play it as well. I can only play three energy worth of block cards right now. Let's do it. Infinite claws. I don't think we have to worry about our claws scaling that much when we've got explosive form. Let's just block what we can. Get everyone below 40 health as soon as possible. Um, that's not going to be a lot of block this turn. I don't know if I want to cardistry something here. I want to make sure we get this and or this. Still not for three turns. Do we get the bomb? Which means I should probably attack this guy. This turn we can't attack. Oh, great. That means I can't empty the hand to trigger unrelenting form here. Are we dead? 28? Probably not. Not yet. That's a lot of damage. The bomb does go off this turn. So we deal two to this guy. And not enough to this guy. We're going to take we're dead. Oh my god. How many wounds are in the deck? Six, seven, eight, nine. And we drew three. 
on the first draw out of 30. And Descender's Bane. That's pretty bad. Welp. That run was kind of cursed. What was it? Four times that we got physically the worst draw possible? Just about? Uh, a couple of times, literally. Okay, then. Let's see what we get this time. Rimworld Jeweler's Kit. I'm already excited. Uh, transmutation can be good. Meta, if I remember, has some pretty good stuff in it. Grand Opening is questionable. There's some good stuff in there, but it's kind of heavy. Let's take Meta. And do we want Warlock? Defect Orbs? I can never remember what's in Quanta. It doesn't tell us what's in Quanta. What kind of synergies do we potentially have? There are some jewels that might make a couple of the wallet cards a bit more interesting. I don't remember exactly what's in Defect Dreams. Hmm. I want to play more with Warlock. And let's find out what's in Cosmos Command. Oh, I remember this. Refract Energy. Deal 14 damage to all enemies. Amplify. Reduce this card's cost by 1 this combat. So if we spend 3 energy on it, next time it costs 1 or 2. And so on. So you can actually get it down to zero. It's pretty good. Subspace. All enemies lose hit points equal to their distortion. Creatures with distortion lose hit points when a card is exhausted, then lose one distortion. The one time I've had a little bit of this, it was really bad. Like, it, it takes a lot to get enough synergy. First time a card is amplified each turn, gain energy. That obviously helps. False Grit can be good, can be very awkward. Exhaust two or four cards. Gain block for each. Whenever you play a card with a cost of two or greater, including Amplify, gain strength. Interesting. Draw two, Amplify, Scry before drawing. It's a zero cost draw. That's already really, really good. And then you can... Sp well, if you have energy, you spend it. You can't exactly decide whether you spend the energy unless you're out of energy. That makes it so much worse, actually. Because you always want to draw first. So it's really just one energy, draw two cards, scry before drawing. Subtle Knife. Deal 6 damage, apply distortion, amplify, exhaust, then add a copy of this to your discard pile. So in other words, it triggers the distortion. If you spend 2 energy on it. I'm not really... I can't really see distortion being that good. Like, almost ever. I have to go all in on exhaust. Uh, gems are obviously fantastic if you get them socketed. They're a little bit different from Downfall's gems. Uh, this one isn't. Roll a d6. Card gains retain. Card gains occult. Uh, basically, it means you can play it regardless of like energy cost or anything. Even if it would normally be unplayable. 
but if you put this on like an expensive power, it's fantastic, but you want to play it last. Channel Frost, that's really, really good to add to block cards. Gain energy next turn, as opposed to this turn. Interesting. Channel Lightning, reduce debuffs by one. Very, very good sometimes. Draw a card. Uh, there's a couple of decent ones in meta. Killer Instinct is busted. Gain two strength and one dex for one energy for a power. Shuffle one or two copies of this card into your draw pile at the start of the fight. Really, really good. Uh, Rimworld is really good as well. I guess we could have some exhaust... Oh, we could have a lot of exhaust synergy with uh, Warlock. So let's imagine we're going all in on Warlock and Distortion. I don't think it's going to scale that well compared to like Imps. We'll see. Alright, well, let's see what we actually get offered first. Choose a rare colorless card at the cost of obtaining a curse. If we're very, very lucky, we immediately get it removed. Can't take the Burning Elite without skipping Rest Site. Can't get a good count of rest sites. Oh, yes, I can. Two elites, three rest sites. I was going to say, if we also get elites. So, double question mark, shop, burn, uh, rest site. Into double elite, triple rest site puff. Oh, it's double rest site, actually. That's the best we can do. Unless we get boots. But then we would have to skip an elite as well. So I guess it's going to be here. I don't mind just choosing a colorless. Or we could take gold because we're going to go for an early shop. That's actually possibly better. Depends on what we're offered. Like buying a colorless card at a shop is definitely more than 100. But what if we're not offered a good one? I don't really even know what colorless cards we want. It depends on what we're offered here. Let's take the gold. It'll give us a chance to pick a bunch of stuff all at once. Oh, I could have killed this. Why has he got 13 health? But I couldn't have full blocked and killed it. Let's strike once and kill him with uh, rummage next time. And we're going to want double defend. That works. Seven block. We're one off lethal. Gross. Well, let's... What have we got here? Defend. Sure. If it was strike, I would put a strike on the top deck. There we go. Voltus potion's really good. Onyx is really, really, really good. Except I don't have a card I particularly want to socket it into yet. Reduce debuffs by one. Glacial Synthesis is quite good. Uh, wait, no, I'm thinking of the the one that's got mutable. Uh, it keeps the block and 
transforms itself. Deal six damage for each point of energy missing. That's uh, different. I think we'll take the Onyx, even though it's a bit speculative at the moment. And let's transform Rummage. Citrine. Now we've got two gems. Uh, that's not great right now. Okay. Reach inside. Find a relic. Juzu. That doesn't help right now. We're down to 37 health already. Not good. Um, we're definitely going to draw multiple strikes next turn. Two strikes will kill this louse in future. And I'd like to make sure we have more block next turn just in case. Actually, yeah, we might get a Senders Bay. Okay. That's fine. Gain energy next turn. Sure. Oh, we're weakened? That's rude. This guy's going to strength buff. We're probably not going to have lethal on him next turn anyway. I think we should... Get this guy down to four. Okay, that is a pretty bad hand. At least we can... Oh man. We can get rid of the weaken, but it doesn't help here. Yuck. Well, we can guarantee lethal for next turn. Doom guard? More like don't guard? Deal damage whenever you play a power. Return this from your discard pile to your hand. Zero cost, but it's only five damage. And we don't have any powers. Deal 9 damage, transmute a card. This is not a great card, but I think we kind of need attack. Alright, random bullshit go. Killer Instinct. Oh man, the waffle. Oh, I really want Killer Instinct, but the waffle. The waffle. I also really want Preserved Insect, but look at our health. I kind of have to. I do not love this, but I think we have to waffle here. 78 health is fantastic at this point. Uh, I don't particularly want to put... I don't particularly want to put gems in anything that we've got right now. But I really don't want to be drawing these gems by themselves. Like, what am I going to put this in? A defend? That feels really bad. We've got a lot of health, maybe I can be a bit greedier. Transmute up to two cards. Hmm. Welp. Even more random bullshit go. What do you got? Can I transmute the Ascender's Bane or is it going to turn into another curse? Need to do this for full block. Do we cultist against the sentries? 
Our deck is really weak right now. I think we kind of have to. So, what do we get? Not a curse. Okay, that's pretty good. AoE is also very good. Uh, we don't have any debuffs to remove. We can gain 7 block, that's not very good. 7 and 7 is 14. Okay. Uh, 7 and 7 plus 8. It's not enough to kill this sentry. But if I don't give myself a defend for next turn, we might not be able to block. We would have been able to block. Alright. Yes, we're blocking... we're taking 8 damage this turn. Don't know what we're drawing next turn, so... and he's on 34 health. I don't think it... I was gonna say it doesn't make sense to put strike in the draw pile, but there's so much dazed I think we kind of have to. So we at least draw something. There we go. Well, there goes half our health, right after the full heal. Can I transmute the dazes? Mojo D, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Welcome raiders. How's your stream today? Factorio, fantastic. How goes the Spire? This run and the last one, not so bad. We did win earlier though. Alright, uh, not so good, rather. What do we got? Viscous Shell. This is the one I mistook that other card for. This is great. Gain 8 block, transmute this card, but the new card is going to keep the 8 block. No matter what it does. Mutable, gain 9 block? Why is it 9? Deal 5 damage? Yeah, it, it's, it's a flick plus block. Oh yeah, I think because it had mutated twice. That's why it's plus one. Cool, cool, cool. I'll kill this one because we can block this turn. Okay. So I started the Factorio Story Mission Scenario Pack today. How is it? I've never tried it. Frozen Capsule. Mutable deal eight damage. When transmuted, draw cards. Hmm, I really like gaining frost for... I really like having a zero cost attack and channeling frost if we have one energy though. But then I'm looking for stuff to socket this into. Mutable gain 5 block. Mutable deal 6 damage. Well that's pretty good. Hmm. Mutable deal 8 damage, mutable when transmuted, draw a card. Or two. I'm gonna try this. And we'll head up to the right. It's been pretty good so far. The first mission is much deeper than expected. Figured it wouldn't go beyond red green science tech, like the campaign, but it's got a lot more to give. Okay. So it's basically kind of a redoing of the campaign, but better-ish, more or less. Do we want to remove a card? Kinda. I think I value the heal more, and we get to keep some gold. We're getting absolutely stomped this run. Frozen egg. 
Every power that we find is going to be upgraded. Oddly smooth is really good. Okay, that's a bit better. Uh, do we enhance... I don't think... Okay, this never transmutes itself, so maybe we put a gem in that. Because I don't know if the uh, gem effect is going to be... is going to stick with the muted... With, with the transformed card. Alright, fine. I'll put reduced debuffs by one on an attack. Not, I'm not happy about it. And we'll just keep this for now. Alright. I guess I'll upgrade the frozen capsule. In a way it tells a unique story. Time for this koala to get to bed. Okay. A great rest of the stream. Uh, thanks for dropping by again, Mojo. Have a good sleep. Okay. Um, we can block 12 here. That's fine. I don't want to transmute cardistry. Cardistry is good. Let's just transmute one. Gem roller d6. Oh no. Um, transmute gets a lot worse when we've got something like Jeweler's Kit in our packs. Uh, that's pretty bad. When this is transmuted, draw two cards. Don't mind if I do. Let's see what this looks like. I don't want to take damage, so we won't transmute a defend. Catharsis. Shuffle a despair into your draw pile. The next card you play this turn costs, uh, costs zero and is played twice. Exhaust. When transmuted, draw two cards, deal nine damage. So it's going to exhaust, and that's going to be the end of the, uh, uh, of the frozen capsule. Right? Deal nine damage, deal ten. I think we've got lethal, though. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm not liking the... I'm not liking these cards. There's, there's one mutation card that I like. And we don't have it. Mutable gain 5 block, mutable deal 6 damage. Sure, I guess we're all in on this nonsense. Uh, Viscous Shell. That's the one card that I like from Transmutation. Trans it transmutes itself, and it always gains block. Okay. So it, literally the first time that we played with Frozen Capsule, we ended up with it mutating into something that exhausts, so we stopped getting value out of it. Learn to conjure packs. Uh, I thought that was the thing to click on to get Banishing Decree. I guess not. Become Vex, uh, become Kirx, Cursed Vex. What even is Cursed Vex? You know, this run is cursed, and I've never tried this, so I just want to experiment here. One of three packs available to your run at the start of the next five turns. Add two of its cards to your hand. But they're not discounted or anything. Vexed. Unplayable. Cannot be removed from the deck. 
while in hand exhaust this when you play a foil card? What the heck is a foil card? I have no idea. Oh, this is innate. Because it got upgraded by the frozen egg. Okay, that's less bad. We're going all in on the random bullshit. This time. Oh, we get to choose. Ooh, Corset has some good stuff. Sure. Did I put that on beta art? I did. Destiny draw? These two aren't going to be that good. Well, Strike is less good. Let's try transmuting. Backpack Smack is fine. And... I guess we'll flick. It's pretty good, actually. Alright. 20 damage incoming. We can block... 12. No transforms in hand. I can draw cards, but then we've only got 3 energy. Oh, it has to be from the draw pile, which is empty. So this is useless. Alright, I guess we'll just... Block, block. And... 16 damage. Show off is good. Synergize doesn't go off for the block, sadly. We can full block here, though. That's something. Also deal a little bit of damage. Uh, we're still not getting synergy going off. Oh, I guess... Oh, I see. So you pick one pack, and all the cards are from that pack. Okay. What am I going to transmute? Two strikes? Smithing hammer. There's my favorite transmutation card. And then flick. Flick the unrelenting force. Nice. That wasn't so bad, but it's very... It's kind of like having Snacko Eye. It's very luck-based. Chain Shotgun is just good. Soul Shear is too slow with the imps. We talked about this two runs ago. There's, there's I think, three imp cards in the whole Warlock pack. And two of them are amazing, and the other one is just pretty lame. Well, Malkazar's Imp depends on having a, a steady supply of exhausts, uh, which I, we don't have this time. Uh, but Seeds of Destruction was absolutely amazing. Much easier to play. And it scales up quite well. Anyway, uh, can we enhance... Chain Shotgun gives us energy next turn. That kind of makes it a bit easier to justify playing the two energy attack. Sure. It's not like I've got better things to put it into. And definitely want to upgrade the Chain Shotgun against anything but Spiky Boy. 
Alright, what are we getting this time? More Rimworld cards? Ran? Okay, it's not which of these packs is good, it's which of these packs on average gives us good random cards. I'm pretty sure Rimworld is pretty good. Warlock has some bad ones. If you're not building the deck around them. Let's take Rimworld. Same deal with Colorless Potion. There are some great colorless cards, but colorless potion on average can be pretty bad. Uh, I don't need a second chain shotgun that's not upgraded. I could double play chain shotgun. Twenty-seven fifty something. He's going to attack next turn, and we really want to prevent that. I think it's worth the despair. Double chain shotgun plus. Also, we gain two energy next turn. And then let's transmute the existing chain shotgun, because I don't want two. If we draw them both, we won't be able to afford them. Sideboard is good. Uh, Searing Synthesis is fine, I guess. Oh, that's a split already. I didn't even notice. Uh, we can full block this and trigger Spike Track. Deal 13 damage to the next enemy that attacks you. Cool, cool, cool. I guess we could transmute the despair when we get the chance. Luciferium is probably not what we want. Actually, it might be good for a finisher if we get it with chain shotgun. But the turn afterward, we add two despairs to our hand. It's kind of nasty. Let's make sure we have Spike Trap next turn. Oh. Well. Thanks again, Ink Bottle. I guess we can make sure they take 26 damage this turn. That's decent. Especially when we were weakened. Trade Beacon. Usually quite good, but... Not sure what we're going to do with it this fight. We can easily full block this. At the start of your turn, set a random card on fire. You know what? In the spirit of science, let's do it. I've never tried this. But again, this run is not the best. So let's learn. On fire. Play an additional time for each fire counter and exhaust. Increase fire counter by one at the end of your turn while it's in hand. Hmm. So we still have to pay the energy for it, but it multiplays and exhausts. Cardistry is probably the last card that I would want to see that on. Uh, first, or ever. Let's transmute Burning Passion, because we literally can never afford it. And a slime. Roll a d6. Ruined Mithril Rod. Unplayable. Retain after you draw 15 cards while this is in your hand. Reduce the cost of cards in your hand by one this turn. And then discard this. That would have been good in the Imp Horses deck, actually. But we never saw it. Alright, so we're going to pop this guy. 
We're going to do quite a good job popping this guy, actually. Does the... Hmm... The fight's not even going to be this long. I want to see what happens with uh, the Cardistry card. I don't think it retains or anything. Killer Instinct is fantastic. It does not retain, but it adds one fire at the end of turn. It's not because it was discarded. Oh, that's a lot of damage. We can deal 22 plus... Well, we're going to have to try... Luciferium, Luciferium. Weirdly enough, two Luciferiums without being upgraded uh, actually puts off the negative effects from addiction for one more turn. So we've got plus 10 strength for two turns before things get nasty. How do we have seven energy right now? Honestly, oh, was it from the Lucy? I think it was from the Lucy. Yeah, gain two energy. That That is actually insane. Okay. And pop. And then we can get rid of these. Oh, that's a lot of damage. If we hit either of these guys twice, they die. If we hit either of these guys once, they die with the chain shotgun. We're going to have to try. What do we get from Colorless first? Enlightenment. Oh, wow. This is why I draw first. Chain shotgun only costs one this turn. That is the best spread that we could have gotten. Spike Trap does scale up or down with Dexterity and Frail and stuff. So unfortunately it's not going to kill one of these. But it is 9 block when the defends are only giving 4. Uh, and we can't... we can't kill this? It would die from the spikes, but it would still hit us. We want to end this fight with as much health as possible. And there's the despair. Setting power cards on fire is just fantastic. Is there a way to set cards on fire that isn't random? I don't think there is. No, it's only Pyromaniac. That's unfortunate. Okay, this one kills, and this one kills. Catharsis. Oh, Killer Instinct. Yeah, it's got to be Killer Instinct. Gain strength and dex, and we can do it three times. Three dex, six strength after we find and play three of those. And it also means that we're not stressed about playing it the first time we see it as well. Since we know we're going to see another one. I guess it's going to be Sozu this time. And then... Triple Rest Sight, Double Elite. We have to leave the burning till later. Oh, it's actually triple, ugh, triple elite, but the other rest site paths are all bad. Don't have that much gold. Okay, conjure. Jeweler's kit is really, really bad for this power. Conjure more transmutation nonsense. And cardistry the shotgun for next turn. 
And play more cards so that we can trigger Ink Bottle. Okay. Whenever you transmute, gain strength. It's way too expensive. Draw a mutable card, gain mutable effects from any number of cards in your hand. Then transmute them. Uh, I don't understand. How much damage is this? 27. Not enough. Well, we do have mutable block, don't we? Yeah. We've only got one defend in hand and five energy. We may as well see what this does. Gain mutable effects from any number of cards in your hand, then transmute them. Choose any number of cards to transmute. What? I don't... I, I don't know if I understand. Okay. Go. Gain seven block. Gain six block. Gain seven block. Deal nine debt. I'm so confused. Oh my god. What the... What is this? Mutable. Gain five block. Draw a mutable card. Gain mutable effects from any number of cards in your hand. Then transmute them. Mutable, when transmuted, draw two cards. Mutable, deal eight damage. Mutable, deal six damage. So this card is now a monster. But we have to draw it and play it again. That was something. We can full block this turn. We can kill an instinct this turn. Uh, we could ambition and create even more killer instincts, but I don't think that's a very good idea. It does give us block and damage this turn, so, sure. Uh, and then Killer Instinct. And then Killer Instinct. And then block. What a weird deck. Ghostly Mist. Mutable free to play. Mutable transmute this card. So, what? Uh, what? Uh, okay. Transmute. What? No, I can't play it until I draw it again. Man, I should have transmuted it with this first. I was going to do that second. Okay, that's a lot of damage coming in. And... I only have one block card. Let's play Killer Instinct. Block six. And cry. Deal 9 damage 4 times the number of hits is affected by block modifiers. What do you mean by block modifiers? Like dexterity? And frail? Well, it's a lot of damage anyway. Is he dead? One off. No, give give me a zero cost attack. That is not a zero cost attack. Ouchie. Uh, show off is really good. And I wish I had found it before I put the gems in those other cards. Apparition, nah. I think not. Okay. We can actually gain two dexterity here. That would be 16 plus 8. We can full block this turn because this is free. Rimworld cards? Rimworld cards. Killer. Oh. Killer. 
I could get all three killer instincts out of the way if we're willing to take a bit of damage right now, but I don't think we need it. The strength is really nice with uh, a triple attack, though. That's actually really bad. Let's transmute this before we play it with the mutable stuff. Four energy. We can block most of this. Scratch that. We can block all of it, I think. Oh, what is this? I guess it's fine. It's still 9 block and 11 damage. That's pretty good. Cardistry, the booster tutor. Get chain shotgun. We're going to take a bit of damage if I play the chain shotgun now. 13 times 3 is tempting. It could kill this guy. But alternatively, we could just full block with a defend here. And we can still afford to deal damage. So let's do that. Now he wants to escape. We've got a zero cost kill. And... I guess this is the most damage we're dealing this turn. He's dead though. Alright. Crystal Resonance Plus. Whenever you transmute, gain one strength. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, I think that's worth. I really want to find that shell card. They're not attacking, that's fantastic. What is Drench? Mutable gain six block, mutable deal six damage. Okay. Conjure. Probably meta. And we're just going to play everything here. We can't even knock the bird down. Next turn, first card draws a card. Okay, that's pretty bad. I take it back, that is really, really bad. We do draw one. We're probably going to draw a Killer Instinct. I actually want to draw a strike here. No, we're at Ascension 18, so we can't knock down the bird without four attacks. Whenever you play a power, return this to your hand. Uh, return this from the discard pile to your hand. Okay, so this is two attacks, three. And if we draw a strike, that's four. A strike or a searing, so it's 50%. God damn it. Wait, no, no, that's good too. Killer Instinct gives us Eldritch Blast back. And then we can knock him down. Fantastic. Okay. We need a barrier or something. That is a ridiculous amount of damage. I can make another killer instinct, but that's not something we could afford to do right now. Then again, we have a zero cost block here, so maybe it is. Put a random power from your draw pile into your hand and copy it. So we're gonna have three killer instincts. We can't afford to play them all. But Ambition's going to be a dead card if we don't use it now. There's only one block card in hand other than Shed Weight. Because 
So it would be Ambition, Killer, Killer, Shed, Defend. We'd almost be better off just attacking the bird. It, It's minus one health, but we get to transmute two cards, and that could be good. Flick uh, doesn't help that much right now, actually. Deal 18 damage to all enemies, amplify, reduce this card's cost. How much block can we get this turn? This much block. Still got one energy here. Let's just copy the killer instincts. And then flick this. And take 15 damage. Ouch. Die hard, you are very late. Gain artifacts temporarily. If your hit points are above 50%, lose 2 hit points. Gain 2 strength and vigor. No thank you. Uh, I have to play 7 cards to trigger Ink Bottle. That's not happening. I don't really want to use a Speed Potion just to heal 4. So... I guess that's it. And Die Hard doesn't accomplish anything except creates a Dazed. There's only one in the draw pile. Let's just get rid of it. Okay. Uh, deal 6 damage for each point of energy missing. It triggers before the energy cost. Today I learned. Eat without table can be pretty good. It's pretty random though. We have to upgrade it. I definitely want Viscous Shell. Give me that. Mutable block. Next two curses we gain don't count. I think I'll upgrade the Viscous Shell. And Slavers. Okay, what are we conjuring? I guess Warlock. Killer, defend, chain shotgun, strike. Not a good start. Perhaps they'll have mercy on us and end this run. Whenever a non-imp card is exhausted, add one imp to your discard pile. It's three energy, though. One, two, three, four. And we need to exhaust cards, which we don't really have in this deck. One, two, three... And then draw three cards, give them ethereal. Most of this is garbage, so that's fine. Well, that doesn't accomplish anything this turn, though. I could mutate this before I play it. Transmute, that is. Whenever you transmute, gain one strength. I don't think we can afford that right now. Is this the only attack I have? No, no, we're good. Okay, let's transmute these two. See what we get. Unrelenting form. Uh, 
gain 14 block deal 9 damage if this card is exhausted at a copy. Okay. By all means, give us some block. How many block cards do we have? Three. And I've got three energy. That's all I have to do. This is going to make Ethereal and Exhaust something random from the draw pile. It's probably not going to be a wound. Veldak, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Been to new office building today. One ultra-wide 34-inch covered screen, curved screen on each deck, uh, desk. I was excited at first and then I started using it. Oh no. Are we dead? Uh, 23. I guess we could start the imps, but by the time they do anything, the fight's probably over. We're not exhausting. Just give me three block. Or rather, not minus three health. Soul fire is good if it hits a wound. Soul shear is something. Oh, is this lethal? Thank god. Okay. Heat engine plus one energy. Whenever you play a card with a cost of two or greater, including amplify, gain strength. We've got two two cost cards, but we keep getting random expensive cards. Do we already have enough strength gain though? Can, can you really have too much strength gain? We're getting strength. Well, I never actually get to play this when we transmute. Hmm. We're getting a lot of strength from Killer Instinct. This, this means Chain Shotgun is going to buff itself. Okay, fine, I'll try it. This is an experimental run anyway. That's a lot of damage. Conjure... Rimworld. Killer, killer, defend, defend, strike. And wonder how much damage we're taking. Way too much. Six health remains. We're taking... We're being attacked for 18 no matter what this turn, so this may as well be... Where we kill the fungi beast? Am I dead? We've got 12 block in hand. We're going to take 12 plus 6. If we kill this, we become vulnerable. Take 50% more, which is 18, which is the same. Uh, Oracalcum gives us 6 block, but only if we have no block. We've got no way to draw. I guess we get bonus energy from Lucy. And we try and... No, it doesn't matter if we kill. We draw two card. We draw a card after playing two. Oh my god. <laughs> that is not the outcome I was expecting. But it didn't matter if it killed this this turn. This doesn't matter. Yeah, we're dead. Not sad to see the end of that particular run. Okay, let me just check something real quick. And we'll at least make a start on a run. 
Goddess of Explosions, Alignment Arcana. Sure. These are all... I either don't know what's good in them or they're kind of meh. Oh, I vaguely remember what's in Mary's and Pixie. And kind of replicators. Hmm. Probably going to be replicators. Marissa? Do the impossible through powers beyond reason. I'm kind of curious. Marissa's got some good stuff. But... It's probably going to be psychic here. Let's see. So first of all, we've got alignment, which has a bunch of cards which cause their effect when they're drawn. And you have to play them if you want to keep them. Unless, of course, you get the remember uh, power, which just lets you shovel them back into your draw pile at the end of turn. Unless you make, un unless you add too many of these to your deck. Some really good stuff in Arcana as well. Like, remove all debuffs. Uh, corset. Goddess of Explosions is amazing. Mostly. Psychic. Replicators I'm not that familiar with either. I haven't used Vexation in quite a while. Because it's one of those ones where the description isn't descriptive. Uh, it does have some good stuff in it, though. Whenever you play a colorless card, gain strength. Okay, but the one I'm interested in right now is Psychic. Deal 10 damage to all, make a random attack in your hand a cult. That doesn't sound good, especially for 2 energy. Make a hand, make a card in your hand, a cult exhaust. Oh yeah, you can make this cost. No, you can make it repeatable. Hmm. Locking deal fifteen damage, apply two vulnerable for one energy. Locking means you can't play it again, unless you make it a cult and exhaust it. Gravity. Ethereal power. When you draw a locked or unplayable card, draw another card. Interesting. It's kind of like the... Uh, it's kind of like Evolve. Negates the downside. Uh, let's see... Draw two cards and choose one. You cannot play the others this turn. Or the other this turn. For zero cost draw. That's not bad. Deal nine damage X times add a molded fire. It costs X to your draw pile. I can't see what molded fire is. Occult deal damage for each... Each what? <laughs> Oh, here we go. If it deal damage, 11 damage to each energy more this costs than your current energy. Wow. So you play it when you have zero energy. And that doesn't X cost damage. So, so malleable fire kind of returns the damage you invest into it twice. But you have to draw... The other half of it. If you upgrade it, the second one does. Well, no, for both in both cases, the second one does more damage. Interesting. Deep Dream. Whenever you play a card this turn, make a random card in your hand a cult. Oh my god, no. In 14 block, make a card in your draw pile a cult. Locking enemy loses three strength. That's fantastic. Zero cost, enemy loses three strength, and then this becomes a curse. It's literally just called curse. 
Of course, you could use rule cancel to play it again and get rid of it. Of course, you have to draw rule cancel with the curse. And neither of them retain. Deal 9 block... Uh, sorry, gain 9 block, deal 9 damage, apply 2 weak. The 1 energy, and then it's locking. Okay. So there isn't really anything in this that we have to super bear in mind while we're building other stuff. Okay. Curse retains on upgrade? Wait, really? Really, really? It... do. That means it's not even really a curse, unless you're getting big hand sizes. I mean, you'll have to draw it one more time after you play it, but still. It's pretty good. Call me Ishmael, welcome in. Upgrade a card. Obtain a random common relic or transform two cards at the cost of 99 gold. Probably the latter. Or a relic. The one thing with the Packmaster is I'm really not excited about... I mean, the Cardistry upgrade is alright, because we're always playing it, but it's only two block. Uh, really not excited about Rummage, though. It's okay, especially in the early game. But I think we're going to transform two. Let's see what we get. Oh. Whenever you... Draw a power gain energy. That's our first power. The Hanged Man, whenever you draw a card this turn, all enemies lose hit points. Unfortunately, we don't have horses or anything. I don't see where we're going to get synergy for this. I mean, maybe more explosions plus? More explosions would be really good, since we've already got uh, meltdown. We can generate more powers. We've got double rest site, double elite. Looks like the best we can do. Yep. Can we get a shop as well? Uh, only if we go for a very early one. And we just gave up all our gold. So let's take the double rest, double elite path on the right. Uh, Cardistry double defend is full block. And we can double strike. If I get, if I spend an energy on meltdown, we don't have to draw it again this fight, but. I think I cardistry a strike, because otherwise we don't have any attacks next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, I think we just race to kill him. Hanged Man does absolutely nothing. Uh, 12 block again. We need strikes next turn. Wait, he's blocking next turn. Okay. And this doesn't accomplish anything. And we're taking 12. Nasty. Maybe I should have played the meltdown to get rid of it. Yeah, if I did, this would be a defend. And I'm still disincentivized this turn to play it. Just need two strikes now. Now we need like three. Twelve, nine and five. We can't afford to kill him. Oh my god. Maybe it was a bad idea. Friends meeting two attacks. Then again, I didn't really expect both of our transmutes to be literally useless for now. Uh. 
We are seriously getting jaw wound. Oh, cool. We can't even, can't even kill him this time. Oh, good. Oh, this is going so very well. So that was floor one. 37 health. Wave motion cannon. Hooray. Block and attack. Good. Thank you. Wonderful. Remove a card. I think it's, like, practically impossible for the hangman to be good in this deck. Deal damage when you draw cards. We're never going to have much of a draw engine in this deck. i got to pay 7 health to remove it, though. I think it's worth, I think it's going to cost us more than 7 health. Like, soon, not just over the whole playthrough. We're unable to full block again. Even though it was attacks that we removed. Okay. I'm not going to strike. Actually, yes, I am. Because this doesn't happen until next turn. There we go. Telephone pole. 15 damage locking. The tower is really, really good in Act 1. Deal 18 or 23 damage. That's oddly specific. If this kills an enemy, play a copy of this card. And it does... One and a half times the damage per energy from strikes. I don't love two cost attacks most of the time, but that's fine. Ripped pecs. Okay, I guess we're taking ripped pecs. Injury telephone pole, injury rummage. Telephone pole, decay, death. One in three to get death. A zero cost six attack would be fantastic. We got it. Nice. That's much better. Now we're looking for block, I think, and powers. Or better yet, a power factory. Okay. Not much to do this turn. I could... Oh, we are not blocking next turn, probably. Well, I, I guess I'll keep Distilled Chaos for next turn. We're going to take one damage right now. I can live with that. And then... Distilled Chaos. If I, top, if I put the Defend on the top deck, then we're guaranteed 12 block. Oh, is this just lethal? Never mind. Opposition. When this card is drawn, a random enemy loses health. And that's not my favorite one of these. Choose, a, choose an attack or skill card. Add a copy of that card into your hand. Costs one energy. Gain 6 block, choose a non-power card that costs 0 or 1. Add a copy of that card into your hand. That's not a lot of block, but it's not bad. We could keep copying Wave Motion Cannon or Death. Don't exactly want to be copying Defense or Strikes. Okay. Let's try and get more wave motion cannons. What does the locking of the telephone pole do? It makes it unplayable. Locking. Here we go. Locked cards become unplayable once played. And then the same pack has the occult mechanic. 
Uh, if you make a card a cult, it can be played regarding any conditions for playability. But it'll still cost you energy. You can play it regardless of the energy cost, even if you have zero energy. But if you, like, make a three cost a cult and then play it, it'll use up the three energy. Okay, that's an easy first turn. Only question is, do I get rid of the Meltdown? I think the answer is yes. Card is three defend. This sucks. Let's just deal chaos. Oh. Might have overdone the block a little bit there. That's fine. I'd rather overdo it than underdo it. The tower is not lethal. Death... Uh, this is 19. I can copy the death card. That gives us 10 plus 4. Yep, yep, yep. And that's without ripped packs. Let's uh, do the death effect, though. If they have 10% health or less. It didn't do it. Normally it does like a million trillion damage. You can't even see the numbers. Justice is a pretty good card. Gain block for each enemy in combat. Even though it underperforms only slightly as a one energy block card in and of itself. Do we take the elite? I think we just lose slowly if we don't, right? Hey, Lagavulin's actually pretty scary, but we have time to prepare. Should I duplicate justice? No, I want to duplicate wave motion cannon. So I could cardistry this so that we can do that? but then I probably have to copy something, whether I like it or not. Uh, making one more justice is fine. Okay, now we can copy wave... Mo yeah, we can copy wave motion. And probably get a decent start for next turn. Oop. And then... Strength, strike, strike. Okay, we do at least get some block. Maybe I should use the dex potion here. 9 plus 7 plus 5, 12. Is this actually full block? Yeah, it is. Alright, we don't need to use it yet. Wave motion again. Wave motion deals more damage than strike. So playing it again next turn is good, even if he's not attacking us. This is the part where I should have considered Dexterity Potion. Yeah, it would have been full block. Okay. I guess we're getting rid of Meltdown this turn. And that's the best we can do. We're down to... Plus or minus zero dexterity. When do we gain dexterity from the potion? Up. Uh, I can gain strength, but I think honestly most of our damage is going to come from wave motion. Except these two is only 18. We should just block what we can this turn. Oh no, I have to duplicate something. Uh, I guess it's a strike. And then... Yep, 
He's not attacking next turn, so I don't want a cardistry or block card here. Alright. Wave motion doesn't care about our negative strength. And it's good to draw it this turn. Sadly, death is not going to go off here. And then? That is just barely lethal. What? 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 What is this math? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> No, yeah, no, nothing happened. Nothing. I mean, that run was over when we got the transmute. We we got two curse cards for our transmute troubles. Summoner's Menagerie is pretty good. Flow is pretty good. Jeweler's Kit can be insane. Artificer, unlock the... Oh, I remember that vaguely. No, we've got transmutation again. Which means we don't want... Well, I, I think I honestly want to avoid the transmutation cards. But we don't want to take Jeweler's Kit with transmutation. Look, I remember some flow cards being good. Uh, life and death is pretty good. We don't have synergy for all for one. I'm pretty sure. Let's take life and death. And... Defective dreams. We've got two sources of orbs. Can we get the elite snipe? We cannot. Technically, it's possible to get this one up here, but I doubt it. We could get... Three rest sites and only one... Oh, two elites. That's pretty good. Streamer too big can't rig for my packs? Wait, what? Can't rig for my packs? Oh yeah, life and death has the minigun. That's, that's fun if you get strength. It's a one energy card that scales five times with strength. What's not to love? Also procs things on hit five times. Uh, I guess the, the snipe is way too much of a long shot. Let's just take health. We'll go the triple question marks up this way. Modders have the power to make the game rigged, summoning things they created. Oh, right. 15 block and 6 damage. That's a lot of strike and not a lot of block in our turn two hand. Ugh. If I rummage cardistry, we get exact block. Uh, if I rummage defend, we get full block and deal... Well, 10 damage. 20%. No, sorry, 40%. Alternatively, full block and deal only 6. I only take 2 if this doesn't go my way, and we can deal more damage. Okay. Generally correct to let jawworm scratch you. So that you can deal more damage. You don't want to be racing his strength gain. We've got 16. I don't know what I'm going to draw. 60% chance of strike. Which would be lethal. Take 2 damage. Okay, now what? That's lethal. 
That's lethal. That's how jawworm is supposed to go. Cool-headed is fine. White Steel Charm. Unplayable when you play an adjacent card, a random enemy takes damage. Interesting. I'd love to socket it with Retain, but we didn't take gems. Now, I don't think you can socket... This is not downfall. We can't socket zero costs, and pres presumably we can't socket unplayables. Deal 9 damage flow. Discard any number of cards. Draw that many at the start of your next turn. Hmm, let's take Cool-Headed. It's hard, hard to say no to Cool-Headed. Strike, strike... Uh, probably cool head of rummage could make all the difference with being able to block. And the only thing that really matters here: three, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna take one damage instead of three. Yeah, the thing that matters is getting through it without hit point loss. Okay. Hail. Deal 9 damage hits an additional time for each time. This was discarded this combat. That's weird. Self-wound, take damage. You can block this and then gain temp hit points. I don't think this does enough for one card slot. Uh, dimensional Icicles. Like ev Even if we never actually hurt ourselves with this. It's like, gain three temp hit points. If that's all it said, that would be pretty sketch. If you do full block it, you're actually gaining six temp hit points for later, but... Yeah. Deal damage X uh, two or three times. The number of hits is affected by block modifiers. Yeah, I don't understand how this works. If we get strength gain... Nah, I don't, I don't know about this card. Hail is scaling with flow? True. I don't have uh, flow yet, though. And this specifically has to get discarded. I think we'll skip for now. Remove a card. Sure. Probably rummage. And gold. That's fine. What do we get here? Max health. And we definitely want to draw two cards with cool headed. Okay. 15, 17. Yeah, we can full block this and also strike one. Next turn, we're guaranteed... If, if I don't cardistry something, this is what we're guaranteed next turn. Let's make it two defends, two strikes. And full block. So we should be able to, no matter what they're doing, and no matter what our draw is, Full block and kill and poke. There we go. Defrag is pretty good. Yeah, defrag. We pretty much always take defrag. And let's upgrade it to focus. Icicles with dice is just a nuke. I see. All right. Meal ticket. We have a shop coming up. That makes me a bit more confident. Uh, let's take this elite. I mean, we were going to anyway, but still. Frost is really good against the sentries. And start chipping away at the one with the lowest health out of the front and back row. Cool had a defrag. We're trying to block 20 this turn. I don't think it's happening. 
One, two, three energy. I'm going to draw a strike and a mystery card. That's fine. I think we card us three the cool headed. Let's make sure we play it next turn. Defrag. And defend. Okay. Card is free cool headed. Next turn we're gonna have twelve block every turn. Pretty unfortunate that we're not attacking right now though. Okay. Please draw block. Alright. So that is twelve seventeen. We're taking three. And we never ever take damage from the middle sentry anymore. As much as I want to kill the one at the back sooner, two strikes would not kill him. Let's make sure we have defend next turn. And that's fine. Well, it's not fine because we're falling behind on the dazed count, but... It's less bad than it would usually be against the sentries. Okay. Uh, that kind of sucks. And we finally have lethal on this one. So we've won. It's going to be a slow grind to kill them, but we can't take damage anymore. Oh my goodness. How many days is there in here? Twelve? Literally half of the discard pile. Uh, definitely cardistry strike, full headed strike again. Unfortunately, we're not drawing this strike for a while. One eternity later, right? But I mean, this is the way to do it with these tools. Two more strikes. And then we're actually net negative on... Well, technically we're already net negative on dazed per turn. But three is a bit much. Now it's 1.5 per turn on average. I guess we're probably going to draw days with this. Yep. Can we just agree to kill all? Oh, is that a console command? I don't know if I have that, like, enabled. 64 exhausted cards. Here we go. Two more strikes. One more st Oh, I should have card street it. Okay. Smiling Mask. Porcupine. I don't think that fits here. You can gain... Uh, thorns indefinitely with porcupine in theory, but it's very slow. It's not like you're going to kill the heart by spamming porcupines. At least not usually. I could see myself taking white steel charm. Eh, I don't know. What boss do we have? Slime. I think I... Gain block transmuter card. No, that's not the one I like. 
Actually, more orbs and we've got focus is probably good. How does this benefit from focus? I think it makes... I think it gives us more thorns if we have focus. We do need attacks anyway. Thorns can do a lot of damage to the heart, but yeah. Better as a relic, yeah, usually. Okay. One, two, three. He's almost certainly attacking next turn. Let's make sure we have a defend. It gives a stronger shiv. Oh. That's pretty frickin' nasty. There's no way if I card a street strike that we'd have 50% lethal here either. <sighs> okay. Bruh. I want to see what focus does with the porcupine. Evoke gain three thorns. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the plus two. At the start of your turn, add a five... Add a five damage quill into your hand. Oh, it does scale that as well. Okay, we want 35 here. Except the biggest attack we've got is a strike, but we get a five damage quill anyway. Let's see what we get. That's more like it. Get rid of the slime as well. Okay. Um, so this is 17. Which means strike kills this next turn. Which means we cardistry a strike. And then... We can actually full block. Okay. Give me those thorns. Oop. Leprechaun. Rolls dice. When evoked, applies Jinx to all enemies. Jinx... Enemies lose hit points when they're debuffed. I don't have a way to do that. Flow. At the start of your next turn, flow. Exhaust or don't exhaust. That's pretty good. Right? But the turn that we draw it, it takes up a card slot and isn't doing anything. Like, we can discard cards, but we can't draw them that turn. Hmm. I don't know. One moment, please. Alright, let's get to the end of the act and I might have to finish. Uh, you know what, let's try flow as a mechanic. And if I'm going to take on this elite, I should probably heal. I definitely should heal. As much as I don't like it. We are going through the shop, which will give us 15. It's not that much. Apotheosis. Clockwork souvenir has a lot to say sometimes. It is useless the rest of the time. Only 50 to remove... We can't Apotheosis remove. We can Clockwork Souvenir remove. Clockwork doesn't do anything against this boss, but still. This is all transmutation. Are you kidding me? Oh no, some of it's go with the flow. It's like the same color. It also has the same icon. 
for the energy, I just realized. Probably the same mod author. I mean, I'm sure it is. Unless it's the highest form of flattery. Whenever you draw an extra card, deal damage to all enemies. Hmm. As in when you draw a card during your turn? Or does it have to be like... Well, we don't have any card draw in any case. This... Uh, this viscous shell is pretty good. I kind of want the artifact. And we can take this or a removal. Flow, gain three block for each discard, each card discarded this way. So minimum we're looking at like 16 if we're desperate. Need more card draw for this to work. Same mod author, same character. Indeed. I think we take... I like Viscous Shell, but I think... Actually, against a boss that's going to give us burns, it's probably better than removal. Gremlin Knob. That's... That's a pretty terrible opening hand. Porcupine's going to give him strength, but we get 5 damage every turn. Hmm. So he gets 2 damage every turn, we get 5. Considering our next turn's hand, I think that's probably a good idea. It also gives us 6 this turn. Oh, we didn't get vulnerable. That's something. Cool headed is net negative one health this turn, but plus two, no, plus four. Oh, it's actually positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've got focus. We're actually plus one health from this, and plus four health every subsequent turn. That's pretty good. Okay. Quill, strike, strike. Do I want a cardistry the strike? We're going to take one more damage this turn, three more every other turn. We need five strikes after this. I think we're in trouble. I mean, we are getting porcupines every turn at quills. Okay. So that's probably maybe lethal next turn. Let's get some block. And we got Mystic Cycle. There's the cheap card draw that we would need for that other card. Gain 8 block, discard up to 2. Okay, yeah. But 8 block is the mutable part. Are we dead? We really only drew one strike here. I can cardistry a strike and then draw. That's lethal. Close. Shuriken's kind of good with the uh, porcupine. Channel pandas? You better believe we're channeling pandas. Okay. I think it's a bit too optimistic not to heal against anything but Hexaghost, though. Very unfortunate. Pandas, indeed. They're basically overpowered uh, lightning. What do we get? Leprechaun? Okay. I think we cultist potion here. We're a bit desperate. Gain loads of block and a leprechaun. Well, I mean, we don't have a choice this turn. When it's evoked, it jinxes. Let's do this first. Let's 
Slime Crush. Uh, we get plus 10 damage once. Got two strength. So this is 18 plus 8. It's nowhere near split. We have to try and block 38. This is not good. This is very bad. Blow. And... Discard Slime. We don't need Defense this turn. Probably don't need Cardistry. And we draw that many more turns next turn. Uh, cards. I don't really want to play the Leprechaun. So I guess I won't. We still haven't split him. Not looking so good. I could just get rid of three slimes here. Let him try to attack us next turn. No, wait, the panda splits him, doesn't it? At the end of your turn, yeah. Which means we have to attack as best we can. Forty's not too bad. Only being attacked for 12 is pretty good. Uh, why don't we just go all in on pandas here? 8, 9, 10, 11. We take... Zero damage, actually. Oh, they didn't split. That's perfect. Okay, more pandas. Fantastic. Beautiful. Ambush is amazing. Whenever you channel an orb, evoke it without removing it. We're definitely taking that. If I had a way to gain energy or something, multicast would be worth considering. Uh, Mirror's Gaze is actually insane as well. Deal damage, modify adjacent cards. Uh, it basically buries this, except for the damage, into adjacent cards. So it's like a spreading virus of all of your cards deal damage as well. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to be Ambush. And are we having energy troubles? We are now, with Ambush. Kinda. We also have some one energy card draw. So probably the... It's either the Calling Bell or the Busted Crown. We need better options for cards. I think we take the Bell. Ice cream. There's exactly the sort of thing that would have led me to take multicast. And we get potions every turn, uh, every fight. And draw cards when we lose hit points just once. Okay, but that's going to be it for today. Uh, let's find someone to raid. Slay the Spire. I think we've raided Zeknar before. A20 Watcher 50 Street Challenge. Oh my lord. It's actually a lot of people watching Spire right now. Well, half of them are... Stream is not speaking English. A20 Ironclad dead branch sure thanks for the stream thanks for hanging out take care jedi turtle valdak everyone else including you lovely lurkers can't hear this guy I'm trying to check if his audio is all right but i can't hear any 
Okay, that's... that's okay, I guess. A20 floor 41 dead branch ironclad, though. Let's give this guy a drop in. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or Factory Blueprints if you're into that, if you have any questions or anything, by all means. And until next time, stay safe. We'll probably be back in a couple of days. And then right after that is Factorio for the next three. Space exploration. Till then, take care.